Greetings, everybody, and welcome once again, mateys, to Roll for Damage and the Humble Word. And uh, yeah, I be Josh the Pirate, and it brings me immense joy to welcome you once again to the Humble Word. To me screen right, I have me, me hearty crew, the incomparable Big Viking Mitch. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Big Viking Mitch? Absolutely. Hello, everybody. I'm Big Viking Mitch. I am playing Nevermore today, and you can find me over uh, at Big Viking Mitch on Twitter, where I do a lot of shit posting. And I'm glad to be back again. Thank you. And Big Viking Mitch, for those of you who missed it, did an amazing stream on Saturday, where he ran uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist with a whole bunch of incredible role players. Go check it out. You can watch the reruns of it. Do yourself a favor. Was yeah. hilarious. Raised a, raised a whopping two thousand dollars for Cure Cancer Australia. So Absolutely, Ooh. that was generosity. Satisfying. Yeah, it is still going as well. The generosity is still. They're still streaming. Uh, they are up to just under twenty four thousand dollars now Damn. for Cure Cancer Australia. It's it's really quite amazing. But you guys topped twenty grand while we were watching you, which was fun. Uh, good job, the indomitable AJ Winters. Hi. Doing things differently. Yeah, that's fair. Why not? Shake tell, things up. Tell us. Tell us. Uh, hey, you can find me on Instagram, uh, where I keep you up to date with creative things, and I'm doing... Um, t- t- you want the full spiel? Full spiel? Half spiel? Look, if you want to do a spiel, you, AJ, AJ is super cool. She's going to be running a, a game for uh, Roll for Damage on, on Thursday nights, starting very, very soon. So stick around for the promo for that video, because she made a whole video about it. Um, we will be running it at half time, so you want to see that. You want to see some exciting sneak peeks, some amazing artwork by Brepi, and some little nuggets of information about that. The Academy of Xandar, and I'll tell you nothing more. Uh, yeah, stick around for half time for that. Uh, then we have the incorrigible D Reb. Hello, I am D Reb in chat and on Roll for Damages Discord. You should come and hang out with us. Um, and yeah, I'm Dan, usually though. I am a lurker at heart, and you can't find me on social media, but I do love you all. Thanks for watching. Follow all of these guys. They're really great. And you can see the VODs of this show and others on Roll for Damage's YouTube channel. Yes, yes. And finally, we also have the indefatigable Rachel Fuka. Hello, uh, I'm Rachel Fuka, and I'm the opposite of Dan because I have too much social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Rachel Fuka, and I do all sorts of creative garbage, including a podcast called The Beginning's Guide to the Occult. That's me. Love it. Yay. And behind the scenes today, mateys, we have the invincible Vegemite Dangerous. We must also shout out to our amazing artist, Brepi, and the deck of many who are sponsoring the show as well as Node One Internet, who sponsor the whole bloody channel. Amazing work by them and a huge thanks as well. So, first of all, mateys, I believe we need a recap of last week, of last adventure. Uh, Ooh, I, believe it's, I believe it's never more. Um, yeah. uh, Jude, 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 please, please, please. Um, the way that we act here is we take turns in doing these things. But and you did such a good you, job last you week. You did, Jude, you did a wonderful job. What I would like for you to do is while I am telling the recap, yes. can you please play the ocarina in the background? Yes. Thank and you. Dance. I will do it at dr- dramatic moments. <laughs> I would appreciate that. Okay. <clears throat> Why would you do this? <sighs> we started off our last session by waking up and finding out that uh, our number of map hatch in the party had gone from two down to one. Uh, <laughs> None of us really seemed to care. We all knew what was going on. No, you know, let's just ignore it. Uh, We continued on. We heard some music out in the trees. I believe it was only Jude who heard the music to begin with. Uh, Jude decided it was time to do a little bit of boogie woogie. Out into the trees, Jude ran, started dancing for probably about 14 minutes straight uh, while we attempted to figure out what the fuck was going on. We could not exactly figure out what the fuck was going on, but we did somehow manage to kill the dancing fire imps that were there and yeah. drag Jude away. And yes, we were okay again. So 
we continued onwards. I made a and sign. You did. That's right. Correct. You made a sign. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me, Trish. <laughs> How rude of me. Yes, it was Scroungecraft. So good at that. <laughs> we came over the rise of a hill, and there we saw the Alder Heart Tree. And Helvig decided that rather than walking, it was time to roll. So Helvig uh, sanic the hag hog down the hill, and <laughs> we all <laughs> walked like normal people. <laughs> um, we got to the tree. People started freaking out because it was exceptionally tall, and yet we clomb. Cl- clom- that's yes. an actual word. A good Clone is past tense, by the way, for Clive. <laughs> I don't uh, think we... it is. Uh... Uh, Helvig, who's the one here with the education? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we cloned the tree, and when we got up to the market area, we parted ways with the wonderful Eliza, who told us to come by at some point in time to her emporium, Eliza's emporium, she'd called it, and she would provide us with a discount, which is just wonderful. Who knows what she'll have? We'll find out at some point in time. I purchased uh, Jude and uh, an ocarina. And can everybody just cover their ears for just one moment, please? Please? Uh, that, that's you too, Jude. I really like the sound of the ocarina. Don't tell any of them. <laughs> anyway, I purchased an ocarina and, oh, I wish I hadn't have done it, but... Yet here I am having to listen to the ocarina. Ah. Anyway, we continued on to the council chambers to inform of the uh, the fires down in the Scorched Grove and of course um, the burning of Ash Barrow. They seemed to know some of it, but not all of it. Uh, they weren't 100% aware of the extent of the damage at this point in time. They claim that they're not in a position to really assist uh, most of them showed signs that they did want to assist the situation, while one of them in particular seemed a little bit more bird folk. I'm all about the damn bird folk. Uh, build a wall, anyway. Uh, so, uh, we she were told that, that unfortunate. No, <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Then, so. Also, she I was Welsh. Help. Oh, really? <laughs> Yes. All right. Build a build a build a small fence to keep the sheep out. I'd like to build a, um, a wall to keep <laughs> to keep all of the animals out of my garden. That would be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> only uh, only so... want the birds. <laughs> so uh, we were told that the big issue is the fact that the bandits have been causing uh, quite a few disturbances on the road, oh which prevents. Anybody traveling in smaller numbers, everybody has to travel in kind of armed entourages in case they get raided. But we were told that given the time of day, we should come back on the morrow. And that is exactly where we left off. That is true. Exiting, I believe. <laughs> yes. Um, so I must also remind our lovely, kind, and highly attractive audience to like follow and subscribe all of the things that we do our channel and our youtube channel and our twitter and our i believe there's a facebook and a, all of the instagrams and all of the things we have the socials you can catch up with the episodes you missed on youtube and uh don't forget to stick around for that promo um so mateys well may our quills protect us and our path be free of big rocks as we descend this particular hill into the humble you have just finished talking to the council who you have who have thanked you for your message and brought uh, you brought but not currently sure exactly what to do about it so they'd be they'd be conferring and uh, when you return tomorrow they'll have conferred so it's about 6 p.m in the evening you'll be in the largest tree any of you have ever seen uh, it's, it's uh, the footprint of the tree is probably about a mile uh, in circumference in oh terms Lord. of uh, like the branches, they would cover about a mile of, of the ground, a radius of diameter, radius diameter um, uh, of a, a mile. Uh, it's about 6 p.m. What do you do? 6 p.m.? P.m. Hmm. Oh, Tooth right. is hungry. 
Hmm. Yeah. Do, do I know of anywhere in the Elder Heart that does incredible mashed potatoes? Can I make a uh, history check? Oh, you definitely could. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Cool. Give me one moment. Uh, yeah. just a twelve. Yeah. Yeah. The, you. It's not a massively complicated thing to remember. You probably spent several weeks of your life here on various holidays and trips with your father. Um, <clears throat> you would have stayed in uh, probably the, his favorite um, was the Golden Horn Inn. Um, they uh, that would be your regular sort of the place that you stayed while you were here. You are aware it is quite expensive. It's in the branches district, so it's um a, a fancier, definitely um, place to stay. Uh, but yeah, the cooking there is generally amazing. Um, you imagine their mashed potatoes are probably on par with everything else you've eaten there, which has been top shelf. I look at my associates, and I realize that that's not where I want to take them. Is there anything? <laughs> is, there any, <laughs> is there anywhere? that potentially might be a little bit more appropriate um, for people is... of their caliber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, wow. there's, uh, there's a wow. couple of other places, uh, <laughs> like, you could... So, uh, <laughs> there's... Sorry. Wow. I'm sorry, I mean, guys. Well, you have to eat. They don't know. You, you're just I like... Know. They don't know that. I'm where just, can yeah. I take my friends, my good friends, my good, valid, loyal traveling companions? Where could I take I want them? The nicest place the I know that serves time. the finest food um, you do know another place in the hollows, mm -hmm. um, which you suspect will probably, uh, like you, you'd eaten there a couple of times when your father had business down in the hollows, um, you, without wanting to travel all the way up to the branches for food. Um, you stuck your nose into the blade and talon. Um, it's not an inn. It is a tavern. That's the one. Um, you can still say that, but it's, it is a tavern rather than an inn. Um, and, uh, that one's, it's, Nice enough, clean enough. Um, it's but nothing fancy is the difference. Yeah. Um, there are there are many other places you could probably uh, you could probably mm -hmm. find uh, lower down. Basically, the branches is the the nicer areas, the your, your yes. peppermint groves, your your Netherlands areas. Gotcha. Then you've got um, <laughs> then you've got uh, sort of um, yeah the your, your, the roots your north... are Armadale. Got it. <laughs> yeah, a little um, the underfall it's called, um, oh. and uh, I would go more Rockingham. <laughs> um, <I'm> Rockingham. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very high birth rate. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, with that knowledge in mind, I will turn to the rest of the party. Look, Trish, by this point in time, we all know that you want mashed potatoes. Desperately. Yes. So, look, there are two options that I know of. Now, one of them, and look, I like all of you very much. You understand this, right? Oh, I would no, not I want do to not put... like that you have to preface it like that. Helvig, um... Helvig, please, 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 please. please. Sorry. Talk, please, please talk. Uh, I do not think that you would enjoy the experience of dining at one of them, as it is more of a high refined dining restaurant. And Dude I know that... Dude is very refined. You are very refined, but um, <laughs> I would argue that potentially you would have more fun an experience, as well as mashed potatoes, at the Blade and Talon, and it's in the hollows, so it's not too far from here. It's a bit, bit down the tree. I don't know, Nevermore. You underestimate how much fun I have watching you squirm. <laughs> Are you implying that we should go to the Golden Horn Inn, then? <laughs> is, that what, is that what we're doing? We're going to go to the Golden Horn Inn, and you're going to embarrass me in front of people. Is that what we're doing? Embarrass you? I would never. Jude, Bullshit. Would you <laughs> Bullshit. Never bore. Trish. Never bore. I just kind never of look more. around at like, nothing to see here. Never more? Yes, little one. Do we embarrass you? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Jude, how did that make you feel? Did that make you feel upset? The thought of that? That you're embarrassed by me? Yes. yes. Okay. See, people that come from my background, myself not included, of course, by this point in time, you understand this. They don't people like from my things. background are not as nice to people who aren't refined and genteel and all of that 
And I would prefer it if you weren't put in a position or a situation where you felt uncomfortable. Hmm? Do Does that make sense to everybody? I feel like, I mean, obviously as well, I don't want like, to sully my name. <laughs> but... <clears throat> What Nevermore's trying to say, Jude, is that the people at this one place are snobs and we wouldn't like them. So maybe right. we should go to the other place. Jude likes lots of people. You do. You you are a very Helvig. Forgiving person. Um Yes, Helvig. Sh- surely it's not it's an inn, right? Surely it's not gonna be that pompous. Like you're you're pitching it like it's going to be like a mansion. It's probably going to be well i mean i it's not probably going to be i know exactly what it's like it's incredibly lavish have you lived anywhere with uh say for example a house with more than six or seven bedrooms have you been in a position like that before yes dude has 16 older brothers they all have their own bedroom yes good lord this is a large house bad example just a little bit smaller. Okay, let's just call the conversation there. I vote the blade and talon in the hollows, which is down the tree. Who Hold would like in. to go to the place where the, the snooty people are? Yes. Anybody? Snooty! Helvig? Oh, no. Um, oh, snooty? Snooty? Or snooty? potentially have more fun. Why is there pressure? Okay, if I vote the golden snobby in... It's gonna, we're gonna go there. If I do Blade and Talon, it's gonna be a tie. I voted for Blade and Talon. Oh, you did? So did yeah. I. You as much it. as I enjoy tormenting Nevermore, I don't want to eat with those people. Let's, let's do, let's do Blade and Talon. But maybe yes. we have donuts and Okay, tea. Jude, we, we can go for dinner at the Golden Horn some other time. Okay. All right. Once promise? we've, what, yeah, well, once we've, once we've dealt Thank with all promise? these problems and I stick my little talon out and hook my talon around your little tiny finger. There. Done. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Once we've, once we've saved the older heart and everybody's like, oh, it's Jude Littlefoot, you're incredible, and people are like throwing their clothing at you, and I don't what? know. Wait. I don't know. Anyway, let's go. What? Continue. Why? Let's. The, the blade and talons this way, everybody, this way. Is that Onwards. a bird folk thing? Yes. <clears throat> yes, never more, please explain. What thing? Oh, the clothing? Yeah. The clothing. Never more, why would someone throw their clothing at you? <laughs> yes, why would uh, they never more? That is a wonderful, that is a wonderful question. I'm going to tell you the answer just as soon as, oh, I tripped. Oh, no, <laughs> oh, no never more. <laughs> Are you okay? The ground. Oh, 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 Lord. So anyway. You make your way. I'm going to like, just because, <laughs> like, I've got a whole thing planned. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> please do, please do. Take it away. <laughs> you make your way. <laughs> to, oh, um, 20 a, minutes a, of conversation. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, right. I'm really enjoying watching Mitch sweat, but this is, uh, I'm going to have to bring, bring this yeah. to an end. Okay, so yeah, you make your way to uh, the trunk. Um, <clears throat> one of the many, many entrance ways into the trunk, which as you have determined is hollow or largely hollow. Um, <clears throat> and it's, uh, so for those familiar with the Eberron setting, uh, Alderheart is very much the shan of the Humblewood. It is a city, it is an up, it, it, it's high rather than wide. Um, the branches obviously spread, but the trunk itself is just one huge living space um, with a, it's sort of a, a, a long concentric series of spirals all the way down. Um, oh, wow. Some areas are sort of self-contained little caverns. These are called the hollows. They are what would be a knock or a like a, a, a a hole in a tree that you would maybe might contain a squirrel or a woodpecker um, in a tree this size contains whole communities of humble folk. Um, and actually it's more often than not mainly humble folk. Um, there is a bit of a socioeconomic difference. Um, if you're in, if you live on the inside of the tree, you're probably a little bit lower down the social pecking order. The people on the outside um, firstly tend to be bird folk because they can fly. Um, and secondly, it's just they uh, the bird folk in Alderheart tend to be wealthier. 
Um, it's not a judgment thing, it's just a thing. Um, so you get to one of the hollows. Uh, it is about, oh, it's about a 15 minute walk from where you were. So after the 15 minute conversation that preceded it, it's now about 6.30. Uh, <laughs> and you get to the blade and talon. Um, it is partially built into the wall of the, uh, uh, the hollow that you're in. Um, the whole place is alive with greenery. Uh, it is, um, there is a large hole in the wall, several in fact, which allow uh, a lot of the daylight, the fading daylight, but still to um, get in. And you can actually see a beautiful sunset through it as well. It's a, it's a really lovely day. Um, you uh, go into the Bladen Talon, uh, which is run by a Luma um, Nevermore that you have met before. Her name is Fancy. Um, Fancy. Fancilla is her name, but uh, everybody calls her Fancy. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, um, to stay here is a, a gold coin a night each. So it's, a, it's on the pricier end, but it's nowhere near as pricey as the other one. Yes. Okay. Well, one gold a <clears throat> night each. Um, I'll cover it and I'll pay for all four of us. <clears throat> Hello, dears. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Um, Hello. Uh, Fancilla, yes? That's correct. Uh, please call me Fancy. Fancy. Wonderful. Good to see um, you. She Look, is uh, a, a dove. It would be the best way to describe her. Is she is a dove in person form. Hi, Hi Fancy. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> um, what can I do for you? Do you uh, serve tea? I do. I serve many kinds of tea. I've never had tea. I had it poured on me once, but not drinking. Um, I could do you a, a, a tasting board of tea. And she <gasps> looks at Nevermore like. <laughs> uh, it's just humor, the humor, yes. Food, <laughs> drinks. Yes, uh, okay, we will. We would like four rooms, please. Oh, Separate rooms. Yep. Uh, and we would like a large bowl of ma oh do do you want to sleep with somebody is that what's happening dude dude will go with trish okay helvig you're on your own i'm having my <laughs> own room uh, so oh, oh, uh, okay that's fine yes <laughs> wonderful uh so that would be four gold and we would also like uh, a massive bowl of mashed potatoes and oh. just slab of butter and some various other fangs. Very well, very well. And and a tasting platter of tea. Is um, anything <clears throat> interesting to do around here in this part of the hollows? Oh, anything well, um, that, like, uh, people that come to Old Heart should do? Today? Ooh. Well, just in general. Uh, but there's, um, there's a very fine uh, <clears throat> art gallery uh, um, just down two streets away. Um, uh, there is obviously shopping is always very popular here. Uh, some people s come to study. Uh, this uh, there is a um, an excellent calligraphy school uh, in uh, well it's, it would be oh, about ten minutes um, back up the way you came if you uh, came from the the central staircase. Yes, yes, um, yes. Uh, yes. It, it depends what you're looking yeah. for. Uh, anyone can find just about anything in Alderheart. It's very much the Portobello Road of the Humblewood. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Oh, nobody else found that funny except me. Oh. Yes. <laughs> That's right. There's not mushroom in there. Tap your head. So, <laughs> let's let's <laughs> get it. Mushroom Portobello. Ah, oh, come on now. Um, what's... I'm glad anyway, you're enjoying let's, this, Mitch. Let's <laughs> have, <let's> have... <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> okay. He's very Let's sit tired. down. Let's sit down. Have some Judgment. water. <laughs> calm down. Fungus buns. Yay. I'm getting cranky. Hey, Shro. Um, all right. All right. You 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 take a you were see you were shown to so the uh inside of the uh blade and talon, uh a good portion of it is actually set up like a uh a, a tea and a tea and scone sort of arrangement. <laughs> Um, the, the, everybody, you don't sit on benches or anything. There are circular tables with um, armchairs. Uh, so you're sitting in armchairs around circular tables, four to a four to a table, 
Um, there is a stage in the corner uh, <clears throat> at which a Mapach um, is a young male Mapach is playing a jaunty tune on a grand piano. Um, and um, <clears throat> yeah, it's quite a lively place. Uh, everything is done up extremely nicely. It would not look out of place in your grandma's living room. That sort of thing, that style oh. and era. Um, but it's extremely fashionable. Um, it, for for uh, current older heart style, Nevermore, you would know this is extremely fashionable. Um, and tea is this woman's jam. Well, actually, jam is this woman's jam. That and like marmalades and things like that. But tea <laughs> is this woman's thing. Um, <clears throat> so, and um, yeah. So happy. Most of most of the dinner is that is brought out is uh, sort of uh, a high tea, basically. Um, so there is, um, Jude will be treated to, there are four small cups of tea rather than one large cup of tea brought out on a platter and placed in front of uh, in front of her, each with a little label on them describing what, the, describing the, the name and the kind of brew that it is. Uh, one, a couple of them are dark, uh, one has a very light tone to it and one smells distinctly of peppermint. Um, then, uh, yeah, there are finger, it's a lot of, Finger sandwiches like uh, watercress and and uh, egg yolk, um, things like that. Uh, muffins, plentiful <gasps> muffins, and a large bowl of mashed potatoes, which really seems very out of place in amongst all of the other quite posh English sort of things. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, cucumber sandwiches, exactly. Um, that was uh, yeah, all of those, all in triangles, triangle sandwiches, of course, um, and. What are the little, the tiny little uh, French style cookies? Macaroons. Uh, um, macaroons. Yeah, mac there are plenty, plenty of macaroons. Is there any fairy bread? That's the question. <laughs> um, you know, bread they're... made out of fairies. No. <laughs> that's that's Monsters. what fairy bread is in the Humblewood. <laughs> <laughs> it's bread made out of fairies. No, oh, yeah, and it's no. a very popular only in the Bandit Coalition. They're monsters over there. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Trish has a much of a taste for the fairy wings. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they're probably. more like insects than sentient beings. Don't yeah, worry about look, it. Look, everything is good, like good old insect meat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, you do that. Um, after about twenty minutes, the guy at the piano takes a break, oh. and. Out you comes. don't to play the piano. Uh, well, before you can, it's very much a, he goes off and somebody with a violin comes out and continues playing. Uh, it's a lot Is more somber, but it's still, <laughs> it's not open mic night. Um, uh, but you're welcome to do whatever you like. Um, and uh, like, yes. is there anything you would like to do this evening? You would like to play the ocarina on stage, please. Um, so, how do you approach this? Do you go I would fancy like at to some go point? to fancy. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, hello. Yes. Hello. Jude is a very pronounced ocarina player in oh. her hometown. And Jude would be honored to play for free here at, at this inn. Well, that's, that's very kind of you. Um, I, I don't see any particular reason why not. Um, uh, perhaps a perhaps a short little set. Yes. Um, yeah. Could you do you think you could fill in for five minutes while uh, while um, Chance over there has a break? Of course, I would Marvelous. love to. Splendid. Thank you very much. Um, so she she bustles over uh, to tell the um, raptor that is on the stage now playing the violin to take a quick break, um, and uh, Jude will go up and play the ocarina. Um, Jude, first roll of the game. Let's have a performance check. Woo! Go, Jude! Woo! <clears throat> the bar is about half full. Um, you are probably the only adventurers in here. Oh, yes. Perfect. This is going to be a car. You do rent, have a booster if you like. No, I'll leave it to bed. <laughs> oh, no. I think it's perfect. I think this is so narratively gorgeous. Um, there is, so Jude gets up. Can I get a demonstration, Jude, of what a four on a performance check on an ocarina looks like? Uh huh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a short excerpt from the repertoire of one Jude Littlefoot. Woo, 
Jude! Yes! Whoa! Yes, Jude! Yes! Oh, this is going to be so what? bad. <laughs> It'll be good. Thank you, thank you. Jude wrote this song. It is called Starry Night Star Time. God, this is beautiful. Very gifted. Guys, I'm finding it really hard to stay positive. <laughs> um, so beautiful. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Do I clap now? Well. Um, yeah. Bravo! Bravo! So I just had a random NPC from a selection that I had on side make a check to determine whether or not they'd be a dick about this. <laughs> Heckle? Roll, yeah. Rolled a pair of sevens. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, you guys whoop and roll with applause, I assume. Yeah, I yes, 100%. I, yeah, you use my <clears> little <throat> vision for an extra, size. like, whoop. Excuse my eyes. Yeah. You use your what, sorry? I use minor illusion for extra cheers. <laughs> and uh, most of the rest of the audience, a fancy says, very fine, very fine. Thank you very much. A chance you can come back now. And <laughs> only, only in the final word is any degree of, I didn't like that at all, and she will not be playing again in any way obvious. It's very much in the chance you can come back now. Um, and uh, and Fancy just ushers Jude off the stage. It's an extremely well done, an accomplished performance. Thank you very much. That was thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, honored. She is, leads you back to your seat and um, puts you back in it. Uh, mm. And then looks at Neville more like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why everybody hates the sound for but... um, Jude, and, that uh, was horrible. Horribly, horribly good. Horribly good. So I almost like every song. other table around, and it's not hard to notice this, was fairly, like, there was a couple of... <laughs> there was one other table at the back who, um... <clears throat> you get this, well, that was very good. I enjoyed it. It was, it was, it was like jazz. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Progressive jazz. Are they, are yes. they being serious? No, no, they, they actually like... appeared to really like it. There's, there's three foreign looking, um, they, they're all, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They are gallus. Um, they are various seabirds, though. They all have a, a nautical aspect to them. They all look like they come from a watery place, probably from quite a way away. Um, their accents also indicate that. And uh, yeah, they, they seem to have genuinely enjoyed it. They're not taking the piss at all. Everybody else who didn't enjoy it is like, and we'll go back to our food and maybe music now. Um, yeah. I'm going to turn around to the chill table and give him like a, like a cheers. And go, yay, yay. Fun, love bitch. <laughs> I'm just going to bury myself in food and try not to comment at all on what I just heard. Sure, I wasn't going for Sean Connery, but yeah, all right, why not? He's <laughs> 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 trying Dutch, but yeah. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that was <laughs> that was very good. Is, I is anything else? Enjoyed it. Anything else anybody wants to do this evening? Are we I believe going to the be... art gallery stays open quite late. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can go to the art gallery, but it's, it's maybe it's not. I think things will get broken, and yes, Jude would just things will get paint. broken, and then next <laughs> thing you know, <laughs> we're <laughs> hundred gold in debt because you've. Gone and drawn on a painting. Dude um, was a very profound painter back in her hometown. Uh, <laughs> are you as good at painting as you were at playing the ocarina? ocarina? Better. At better least. Better than the ocarina. And that's really? a high bar. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> so the rest of the evening passes relatively uneventfully. You don't manage to offend anybody. Jude drinks a fuck ton of tea. Um, <gasps> Jude, I assume you enjoy <laughs> most of it. Um, like there's some peppermint one. It smells like death. There's a couple of ones that are quite uh, smoky. 
um, like she when when you start showing real interest, Fancy is like, I'm not okay. This kid needs teaching. I will. I will do. Um, so Fancy actually comes out and she she, she is taking you through her whole range. Um, <clears throat> so you get some Highland oolong in there. You get a couple of um, there's there's one that is uh, oh. My words are failing me. I know good teas. Um, I know all the teas. I have all the best teas. One's um, called the Ashes of Ash Barrow. <laughs> uh, it's just literally oh, no. like ashes. Yes, there is. There is. Um, uh, yeah, rose tea. Uh, rose tea is beautiful. Um, yeah. There's, there's one that tastes of apple blossom. Um, yeah, there's ma- some very magical teas in there. Um, you enjoy it. Notes. You have a pleasant evening of tea tasting, and then you go to bed, presumably. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude will um, be up and down the entire night having to pee. Unfortunate um, for you, Trish, having to share a room. It <laughs> <laughs> just constantly hear this little. Uh, Trish, <laughs> is it? I'm gonna just run it quickly. Does anybody want to do anything prior to bed? I do just want to check up on Nevermore. Oh sure. Hmm. Like when you go to your rooms, do you just knock on Nevermore's and just to make sure he's okay? Is that the yeah. idea? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Hello? Um, it's me. Oh, Hi. yes. Come in, Helvig. Sure. Um, walk in. Hmm. Um, I just wanted to, you know, see if you were okay after what happened while we were walking and you being on fire. Hmm. Ah, oh, yes. Um,. Oh, completely forgot about that part to be honest <laughs> had completely forgotten about it uh i'll kind of pull my cloak back i'll look at some of the burnt feathers i'll put them back over again <sighs> i understand it'll grow back it's just uh, it's horrible looking like a filthy commoner um and i feel like right now i'm ragged looking and i don't like it but hervig Thank you so much for asking. It is very sweet of you to care about me, so. Are you, are you sure? I'm sure there's like, this is a big town, maybe. Hmm. Not looking like a commoner is so important to you. Like, maybe you can, like, s- go to a place where you can, like, get, get my yourself feathers. cleaned up or something. Uh, Helvig, Helvig, Helvig. Are you saying that our group is going to have a spa day i mean i Imagine maybe not the whole helvig helvig shut are oh. you saying we're going to have a spa day <laughs> i guess i'm saying we're having a spa day oh my god fires and death fire and death <laughs> oh yeah shit that's right fire and death <laughs> damn it damn it Oh. But really, let's consider fire that there's death. a fire and Always. death situation. Uh, well, fine. We're coming back here at some point in time once the fire and death is fucked off, and we're going to get our nails done, and you're going to get your quills painted. I... I... I what? <laughs> So Tr- Trish now. and Jude, Trish and Jude, you're next door. Um, <laughs> you've only heard you like you haven't heard any of this except for uh, every night. Like after a little while, you hear you two. There's a break in the conversation between you, and you hear spa day, spa day, spa. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Fire and death, fire and death, and that's <laughs> the entire conversation oh. you over here. <laughs> Is Nevermore oh. talking to himself? It wouldn't surprise me knowing him. He is. It sounds like he really wants a spa day, though. I don't know what a spa is. Is it like, like is it a like bar? A is it like edible? It's it's where you go to a place and they make you feel fancy, and they and they comb your fur and they put ooze on your face, and it doesn't sound as fun as it probably is. I've never had one, but I'm intrigued. Dude, dude has never had like a real bath before, like quick bath, but not like in like those theater productions where there's bubbles and like, like a smaller toy that looks like a bird but it's not a bird and it's like yellow. Honestly, I think baths are a bit overrated. The bubbles pop immediately. You're not missing out on much. Oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> and 
Anyway, oh, Helvi, okay. get the fuck out of my room. I need to sleep. <laughs> okay, Bob, sorry. I asked, uh, but fire in the butt. Love you, bye. <laughs> Slam Wait, <door>. what? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you, Unks Gob. I'm glad that was clipped. Um, great. <laughs> right, so, uh, the rest of the evening passes uneventfully after that. Um, speak now, but have forever hold your peace. So, um, can I get a perception check from everybody? It's almost like going to bed was going to herald something. Okay. And you were trying to put it off. Um. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> wow. <laughs> Huh? Oh, wow. excellent. Wow. I'm imagining a spa day. In, uh, <laughs> dreaming of spa day. Nevermore is definitely dreaming of a spa day. You, um, you did a little curly in, into um, uh, into Trish and just passed out. I brought my fluffy tail up to use as like a blanket. Oh, I hug it like a teddy bear. It's <laughs> <laughs> the most adorable and wholesome thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I really want fan art of that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yes. Like, if ever fan art was a thing, I'm that seriously image. contemplating just, hey, Brepi, I've got a couple of hundred bucks right now. Do you want? Because this needs to happen. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, oh, God, it was so it low. It was such a low bar that you guys needed to clear. Um, I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> but we didn't! Well, no, Rachel did, but she's the only one who did. Um, Got that night vision, baby! Yeah, um, so in the middle of the night, um, <clears throat> uh, you hear a citywide alarm. You are woken, basically, it's, you're woken up by it first. Um, it starts out with a single bell ringing, and then two, and then four, and then, yeah, different parts of the city start coming back like it's not it's older heart is very much the city that never sleeps but it certainly quiets down this is very much waking up again um but it's it's probably just past midnight um and you you sort of waken up and you've got a you've got a, a joe bean wrapped around your tail um and it's sort of like she's spooning you your tail and then you're spooning her um it's an amazing filthy, mental image <laughs> filthy filthy peasants go away go away <laughs> Yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's my gold. I, I earned that. I earned it from my father. My feathers, feathers, feathers. <laughs> um, um, I, I scoop Jude up and sort of just carry her out to the other doors, and I knock on both of them. Just uh, you also forth. hear um, the rousing. You hear some the perch guard rousing from their posts several times. Um, like as you're getting, as, like. <laughs> As you're scooping Jude up, you hear a clank, 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 clank of armored soldiers running past the tavern, running uh, past the inn. Past, not two, but past. Okay. Yeah. Dad, I, give me I five the more doors. minutes. I uh... knock real le- Get ah, up! Poverty! Something's uh. happening! Get up! <laughs> what? What? Uh, what? Poverty! What's happening? <laughs> uh, There's an alarm. We've got to get up. Get your swords and stuff. Then Things you, are happening. Then all you are uh, all awake, and you all hear someone shout, "Bandits! Bandits at the gates!" Oh, fucking bandits! All right, let's do this. Everybody oh. together. What do, what we do, do you do? Very early. <clears throat> you uh, repel bandits. Repel the okay. Uh -huh. All right, let's <laughs> let's 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 just quickly assess the situation. Let's go downstairs, look out the front door, see if there's anything we can do immediately. Um, Jude well, like immediately straps up all her like armor and swords in place. Ready to Jude? go. Jude, Jude, Jude. Yeah. This could get really hectic. Please, please stay with us. We have get to stick together backpack? because it, no, because you cut my head off accidentally. I heard get <laughs> in your backpack. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you cut my head off, I'm going to be exceptionally pissed off at you. All right. Um, so you guys come downstairs. Nevermore, um, Fancy is there, um, and she she's um, wearing a nightgown. Um, but um, she says, "Oh, Nevermore." Um, she does like you. You do know her. You, um, yeah. <clears throat> she's, "Oh, Nevermore." Thank goodness. I think they may need help. Apparently, there are bandits attacking the northern gate. The northern gate. I know exactly where the fuck that is. Let's go, everybody. You do. All right. um, yeah, you do that. Uh, very Stick well. Together. 
you go. Um, so the city is awakened, but most people are sort of, you can see a lot of people in their houses, um, like just locking doors, closing doors, and sort of barring windows and making sure they're all safe, which is ridiculous. They are at least 400 meters above the Northern Gate. Uh, hmm. It would take 20 minutes on foot to climb the tree to get to this place. They are being ridiculous, um, but Can they I... are overreacting. We I'm gonna can ask, see, right? we have a long rest? Um, so. It would count, it'll count. I mean, I don't, think you, actually, cool. I don't right. think you burn really any spells or anything last day. No, sorry. Well, not me. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Sorry um, for interrupting, Helvig, what were you saying? I was just saying, like, we can see, right? Like, there's no there's no problem of accidentally falling out of the tree and dying. Because no, that's no. what I'm thinking right it's now. It's actually almost <laughs> impossible. Like, the tree is so large. Falling out of it's actually relatively difficult, particularly while you're in the trunk. Okay. Um, they do have, uh, at all times, you are aware that there is a sort of a, a watch of bird folk wizards um, and clerics who can, they, they stand in the branches, and there's about four of them on watch at any one time. Um, they tend to be all raptors and strig, so they have excellent eyesight. Um, and if anybody does fall out of the tree, um, they are prepared to sort of dive after them, because as, as Nevermore knows, bird folk can't fly, but they do glide rather well. Um, mm. So uh, any bird folk who falls out are probably going to be fine, unless they're very, very young. But any humble folk that falls out, the these people are trained to fly out, to glide out to them as they're falling, cast feather fall on them, and guide them either back into the tree or to oh, the wow. ground safely. That's fucking um, dope. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> it is one of the public services that is it was like just for the safety of the humble folk who live there. It's very necessary. Uh, you cool. probably you would know that there's probably one or two a day, um, and uh, more than once people like it's not uncommon, but uh, yeah, it, it happens. Yeah, at least two or three times a day, and children mostly. I run, but I'm significant. Well, I'm it's smaller well than everyone else. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so it takes you uh, at, a, at, a, at a run. It takes you about ten minutes, but you you get caught up in a group of perch guard running down, and they say, "Ah, oh, adventurers, brilliant! Come, come! We need all the help we can get." Um, and most of them seem to be armed with bows um, or other ranged weapons. Very sensible. My drama. Yep. Backpack. Backpack. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And uh, yeah, so you get there, you arrive uh, at a platform in front of the northernmost gate. Uh, there you are faced with a dismal scene. Several wagons are being besieged by a massive bandit force. Probably two or three hundred bandits out there um, trying to storm the gate. It, it, at first you worry that they are in fact trying to storm the gate. Stormfell, you bloody legend. Look at you go. Ten, ten gift subs, that's amazing. Oh wow! Thank you. Oh, look at that oh, harrow bar! Look at that harrow bar! Oh, 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 oh shit! Ninety-five point seven percent. We're going oh. to die. So if it gets to uh, just for the uh, just for a chat, just for the audience, if it gets to hundred percent, what happens is we draw a card from the deck of many, harrowing deck. Uh, uh, which is uh, terrifying. Uh, could it be is awful. absolutely terrifying. If we get to 100%, <laughs> some terrible today, things, especially we might right now, we might be. F it could be amazing. Like, there are about 20 options, two or three, fucking brilliant. The rest, eh, not so much. And we um, have an army of bandits add to the gate. <laughs> So keep them coming, Stormy. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. That's fine. <laughs> what a legend. What a bloody yeah, legend. thank you so much. Yeah, that's, thank you. that's fucking wicked. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, this this is, a, you know that there are a lot of um, material has moved around the forest um, by these caravans. Um, the, the Older Heart is such a huge place. It requires the efforts of several um, sort of uh, satellite communities to actually feed the great city. Um, whilst there is some farming done in the higher branches and in the trunk itself, uh, mostly their food does have to come in from over outside, particularly uh, any livestock. Um, this is one such caravan. They're bringing food and um, supplies and often quite a bit of money in as well because it all has to be paid for. Um, <clears throat> and uh, whilst they are tend to be heavily guarded, particularly currently, it was not enough to stop this enormous bandit raid. Bodies are strewn about. Um, there is a good phalanx of perch guard at the gate 
basically stopping the bandits from getting in. About half the bandits are part of the force that is trying to get in. But can I get can I get an intelligence check? It's it's tactics. Um, so never more. And I'd say Jude. Um, yeah, Jude. I don't know how is your intelligence, Jude. <laughs> Um, like Not Jude, good. Jude would have advantage because it is a tactics-based thing, and you're the only one with any sort of real military training. But Nevermore is quite smart. Um, yeah, uh, Nevermore, you probably um, can tell this from looking. Uh, Trish, you could also have a have a an attempt at this one because Ooh, oh hey. shit, crit, crit success uh, on an eighteen. Twenty minus two. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> Wow, two of you took intelligence as you dumped stuff. Well, your father was a tactician, so... Yeah. Um, and, I come yeah. from military background. So um, <laughs> both Nevermore and Jude, um, from the very, very similar um, vantage point, can tell that these guys, the, 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 the phalanx that is trying to... Um, that is putting pressure on the perch guard at the gate aren't actually... doesn't look like they're really trying to push in. They're holding them in place while the other half of the army of the force is um, looting the shit out of the caravan. Um, and you can see them as you're watching. Some of them are, that they're, they're passing bundles to each other and the ones at the back are taking them off and running into the forest with them. This is not about trying to get into the city. A force of 200 is not trying to take Alderheart. It is robbing Alderheart. Um, it's just mm. a massive organized raid. Um, what is going on? Uh, the perch guard are so the 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 there is a relatively small and badly outnumbered um, group of perch guard defending the gates. Um, probably about four to one outnumbered, but they have locked shields and spears and they are just holding the line. Um, <clears throat> and probably the only reason they're succeeding is that the bandits aren't really trying to get in. However, mm. they are being uh, they do have Overwatch. Um, a support from people on the walls, mostly uh, mostly other perch guard, but several other citizens of the of the um, Humblewood and of Alderheart have come out with their own personal weaponry and are adding their strength to the walls. Um, yeah. So, uh, really, the question is, um, what do you do? Uh, hmm. Obviously, after having assessed the situation. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to go anywhere near the fuck anywhere near that gate. Excuse the, the language. Gate I've is been the... swearing quite a bit today. Yeah, you you have um, been. I was gonna say that. I know. Anyway, the gate is about a hundred feet high, as well. So the rampart above the gate is about a hundred feet above the actual gate. Um, oh, there is very little return fire coming up from the bandits. Ah, well, is important point. Hmm. Seems um, like it's I... probably safer up there, and we still be able to do some things. Anybody who has ranged attacks. I scan for any injured. There is oh, dozens, dozens of injured uh, on the on the balcony on the on this rampart. Very few, um, and as they are hurt, they are almost immediately taken away. There is a, there are the citizens who aren't there to fight. There is a group of citizens who are there. Basically, anybody who gets hurt, they are pulled off the line and um, brought to the rear ranks and seen to immediately. Hmm. <clears throat> um, I'm not really good at all of this, like, strategy stuff. So what do you think I should do? Um, a passing bird folk captain, a, uh, a strig woman, um, hears you and says, if you can help, help. We need we need range fire on the walls as much as possible now. But they're going for the looty stuff. They're also killing my men down there. We need to get up the top and help them out, <clears throat> Jude. We're not going out in, in the midst of all that. Come. And, and do you know what, Jude? Can you please defend us in case somebody comes up onto the wall and attacks? Okay. But okay. Jude, Jude has not very good at range spells. Like a, like a, I do this really fresh spell casting, and do this really scared. Yes, but the I don't know something might fly in and attack, and then you'll be there with your sword to protect us. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay um, so let's go to the walls. What do you do, um, Trish? You're going with, I presume, Helvig. Yes. Okay. Up onto um, the walls. So there, while you are there, um, uh, this is like it's not really a combat because. Um, mm. you, you guys are like, no one is really firing back. I will get 
a dex check from a dex save rather from all four of you unless so jude is presumably out of the backpack yes <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. um yeah for the most part uh everything is absolutely hunky dory fine um trish however you do take um one of the very few return fire shots um it hits you in the shoulder you take and we'll just roll it Trishy. Um, no. You take oh, you take six points of piercing oh. damage to your shoulder as an arrow. One of the very few. This is a uh, a heavy crossbow bolt, um, which is why oh. it had the range. Um, <laughs> and uh, you're the tank. However, yeah. <laughs> um, and in return, you guys, I'm going to say you make five ranged attacks each. Um, yeah. So yeah, make me five ranged attacks. Oh, sure. Does Jude have range to take? I believe you have javelins, but javelins are a maximum 90 foot shot. And I um, don't have four. And you only have four. Um, I think, yeah, Jude, you would be sticking to defending your friends. Um, Trish takes damage. Uh, you could lay on hands. Okay. So, oh. um, basically, Good. can I tell, can you guys, um, each one of them that beats a 12, let me know how many of them you do each beats a 12. Sure, all of mine beat a 12. Nice. Um, Trish? Well, they're, they're 12. Is 12 the what we need to be? The or AC. Is it... the okay, AC. yeah, sweet. So it is 12. All of, well. 12 and above hits. Yeah, yeah four, four of my five beat 12. That's a couple of good ones from Trish. Oh, wait, I'm gonna. Uh, mine are all over 12. Could I Hell yeah. really yeah. butcher them? Um, yeah, you thin the ranks quite my... significantly. I'm yes, I'll use Jude. my booster. <laughs> Does Jude see Freya? Who? Oh, Frey, um, who? <laughs> Freya was the bandit that Jude has sworn to oh, slay. Oh, right, I'm with you. Fox. The fox one from the- The Vulpin. From F1. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, Frey, yes. Uh, no, you do not. I'm, uh, well, I'm actually, do make, make, not... me a, make me a perception check. Okay. <laughs> it's a very exciting 21. Um, you know what, Jude? You don't <laughs> uh, you don't, you see a, um, there are several Vulpin down there. There's at least like a couple of dozen Vulpin down there. Um, and at the very rear of the formation, you do spot somebody directing troop movements that you think might, that could be, it's certainly a female Vulpin who at, like, you're 300 plus feet away from her, mm. but it's a female Vulpin in similar armor. Never more. <clears throat> Yes. I want to kill that one. Um, as you watch, and, however, as yeah. you watch, Jude, she retreats with um, a good portion of her men into the forest, mm. um, laden down quite heavily with um, gear. So all uh, did all of you beat all five beat twelves? Yes. Four we, we, four, I missed four. one. So we had we had eleven shots on target from the three of you. Uh fourteen. Oh yeah, fourteen. We, sorry, yeah, yeah, we all yeah, made five. There was yeah, there was cool. five. Yeah, um, yeah. In which case, so um, your your assistance has greatly reduced the casualties. Um, yeah, you guys did really well. And I try um, not kill them. Yeah. Um, so Helvig, can you describe to me what your uh, blasts would be looking like? Because you can do something different than just kill if that's what you're wanting to achieve. Um. Yeah, my the fireflies come out of my back from in between the quills and they gather round, but I try and make it so that it like the fireflies would graze them or the energy that appears like fireflies just grazes mm. them or like scatters a bit before impact. Yeah. And as the, so and then they just return like kind of like a like planes in a carrier, they just go new and then come back. New, <laughs> very well. Um, yeah, you do that. So um, you are raining fireflies down on these people uh, on the 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 phalanx at at the gate. 
Um, and wherever your strikes hit, rather than actually hurting people, what they do is sort of create gaps. You sort of push people back, knock people back. However, in a phalanx, a gap is not what you want. Um, um, and uh, a lot of the, the perch guard is a soft gap, as you might say in a, uh, an otherwise impenetrable shield wall. Um, and the perch guard are particularly adept at making uh, making use of these soft <laughs> gaps that you are creating. Um, so you, uh, you you basically give an awful lot of opportunities for uh, the, the perch guard to get in a good, easy hit. Um, Trish, uh, yours are, you are shooting arrows into the tops of people's heads, basically. Uh, Nevermore, what manner of ranged spell are you doing? Are you doing fireball? I'm raining fire on them. Fi yeah. I'm fire bolting them. Yeah. yeah, just dropping fire bolts on their heads. The the ones that look like that they're, they're uh, trying to they look like they might attack one of the people in the shield wall. I'll try to focus on those ones. Very well. I will also say to Jude, 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 please keep your eyes on the uh, other parts of the wall as well from here. Make sure that nobody's uh, going to be ambushing us or attacking us from behind. Yes. Mm. Okay. Wonderful. Um. The uh, the strig captain that you saw before um, says uh, says amazing job. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Um, <clears throat> and you see, uh, so taking another peek over the wall. Can I get um, yeah the tactically minded pair to have another look? Absolutely. Intelligence. Yeah. Ten. Twelve. Twelve. Jude is good at this. But um, yeah, Jude, advantage? Uh, yeah, 16 is, yeah. Um, so yeah, Jude, you uh, you can tell that uh, the the bandits are retreating. That, that uh, this is a, not just, they're not just running away. They haven't broken, you haven't broken them. What you have done, however, is cut short their looting. Um, they're, the uh, the phalanx is not holding its position nearly as well now that its numbers have been cut down to size a little bit. The uh, perch guard are holding their ground significantly better, and the phalanx at the gate is now staging a tactical retreat. Uh, they are pulling back whilst maintaining their their ranks. They actually withdraw outside of range of you guys, um, and once more they are sort of that they are. Uh, they've withdrawn to the point where the perch guard don't follow them. The perch guard are tired. Um, the men at the door, particularly the gates, um, they just don't have the energy to follow. Um, so they, these bandits are screening their fellows who are now making a quick dash out into the forest. And as you watch, the phalanx does begin to disperse and withdraw back into the woods. Um, you do see one... Uh, you would see one small group, however, um, who are, they appear to be busy pillaging a watchtower and they don't seem to have noticed uh, that everybody else is pulling back. Um, I wouldn't call it breaking, but they are leaving uh, in good order. Um, <clears throat> in most places, the deed is done and the bandits are leaving, but a group of brave or more likely foolish bandits are trying to break into one of the outer watchtowers, presumably for the weapons concealed within it. Left unchallenged, it is pretty clear they'll succeed. They are well outside the range of the archers on the walls. Um, and Not on probably, our watch. They'll probably get away. There is little left in the defenders for taking the fight to the bandits just now. We will um, all, well, I'll definitely. Yeah, should we head down? Yes, they're, about, yes. they're about 500 feet outside of the gate. Um, but you can definitely descend the gate and, and head out. Um, the phalanx at the gate, um, there, the main gate has not been unlocked, but there is a sort of a normal sized door in the gate that is people that are uh, being, the, uh, the wounded are being brought in through. And uh, a few uh, wounded bandits have actually been brought in as well, men who were cut down outside, but not killed. Um, they are being brought in as well and apparently being tended by healers as well. It's sort of like it's not an automatic death sentence. We're not just going to kill you if you're injured in battle. We will look after you, sort of situation. Um, <clears throat> so um, you make your way out, and uh, people let you pass. Um, the, the perch guards say, are, "Are you sure? I, don't don't follow them on your own, all right?" Oh Lord, no! We're going to go deal with those ones there at the tower. Very well. Um, 
I, I'll I'll rally some men and we'll follow you in a, in a as as quickly as we can. If you, yeah, thank you. Um, and yeah, so out you go. Um, let's have. Uh, I do. Are you approaching stealthily or are you going in hard and fast? <laughs> yeah, dude's way, hard and fast. Mm -hmm. Yes, hard and fast. Clank, clank, clank. No soft gaps here. Okay. Take the initiative. Very well, then roll oh. me. Um, so uh, can I? Yeah, roll me initiative, please. <sighs> we are 2.55% yeah. from filling up the bar. No! Oh, boy! Uh, uh. Oh, dear. <laughs> Um, so uh, you can do we... see the map you are on. Um, you are approaching from the south on that road. Oh, south. Well, the south east. Oh, left. Please. Yes. I am the slowest, so I'm probably the most behind. Oh, that's wonderful. 22 initiative. Do, do, do. Initiative time. <laughs> I'm so everyone. slow! <laughs> so it looks like it's 500 bits fills up the bar 1%. No! Yeah. No, so no, no, no. 2,500 2, and... It's not the math. Oh, 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 no! No! <laughs> I mean, thank you. What, what? Agal Kitten. Oh. Wait, did it just oh. stop at 99.95? Five? No. Oh, God. Wow! <laughs> No! no! <laughs> yeah, it is five percent, point five of a percent away. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> there it is. Well, <laughs> um, so I may I be the first to say you bloody legend. Uh, yeah. Thank so you, um, we will. Uh, we are. We I. We are rolling the initiative. And what mm -hmm. we will do, uh, I, we will work out who gets to go first. Have we got everybody? We've got Helvig, we have Jude, we have Nevermore. We don't have Trish. Get in here, Trish. Honestly, Trish. Did. Yeah, um, so you need to click on your person and then you need to use that. But that's okay, we've got a 13. I just need you to do it so that you pop up in the turn order list. So if you could left, if you hold shift and, and click on Trish on the map. Apps, yes. On the map app. And then roll initiative again. Sixteen. There we go. Uh, you should now be in there. And whether yeah. you did, oh, so we start. Roll... I think here somewhere. Oh. Oh, Chris got gifted a reload roll. Oh, thank oh. you. From Veggie. And which is more bits. Oh man. Um, reroll for Trish. And uh, yeah. So what we will do. Oh. Um, so. This is very appropriate. Um, I'm nervous as of, fuck right now. I don't know what's going on. Three of the four of you get to go before any of the uh, the bandits. Yeah, yeah right. rub it uh, in, Josh. Which All is right. appropriate. So what we will do um, is those three will go, and then we will have a break. Okay? Ooh. And while we're on the break, we will figure out how the Harrow Bar works, and when we come back, we will tell you and show you, and you no. can see... The beautiful things. All right, so Nevermore, you get to go first. You can see before you a quintet of bandits. Uh, there are three Mapach, a Jerbeen, and a Vulpin. Uh, the Vulpin seems to be the one in charge. The Jerbeen is busy picking the lock to the door to get into the um, watchtower. The Mapach are all a bit laden down with stuff they've already pillaged, um, and there is a bunch of overturned carts around them. There is also a campfire. Uh, mm. And a few bodies strewn about. Um, they are very clearly dead, however. So, um, mid combat harrowing gears. All right. I'm going to move five, ten to here. So I have sight on the Jabin that is oh, picking the lock. Very well, yes. Stop giving Jabins a bad name! And then I'm going to shoot. I'm going to tap the top of my book and. And I will flick out. Um, we'll just start off with a firebolt. A firebolt, you say? With a 22 on the die, stealing 6 damage. Uh, Ooh. I will use my booster to Ooh. add more damage. Ooh. Another d6, please. For 3 more, yes. so that's 9 points of fire damage. 9 to points the, of the beam. fire damage. Beam. That's very unpleasant for them. Back to that Sean, is okay. my oh, 
action. That's my move. That is all that I've got. You have and done that. And then I will move behind... <laughs> I'll move behind the mighty mouse. Couch. Slightly. Oh, very well. Our combat announcer. Trish. All right. Show me what you're gonna do. I'm gonna scurry on up near this cart, Ooh. and I'm going to fire an arrow at the closest map patch. Very well. That would be Gorm. 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 Back of the throat, Gorm. It's Gorm. Um, give it to you. Sorry. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, that is a hit. Good. Twelve hits. And I get oh. sneak attack, right? Yeah, yeah you do. Attack. Yeah. Yeah, because he hasn't had a go yet. Uh, oh, ten! Yes! Deary me. Um, Who's yes. the... Get wrecked, Gorm. Oh. Ready, hit it. Yeah, and then it's Jude! Uh, Trish, um, you can also take the... Uh, you have a cunning action now. Don't forget about the cunning Ooh. action. Um, cunning actions for Trish. Right. Um, there are some, several options, my friend. You could... Uh, as a bonus action, you could dash, disengage, or hide. None of which oh. are overly useful in this situation. Not really. But it's <laughs> good to know that they're there. Cunning action, aim. Uh, you gain an additional way to use your cunning action, carefully aiming your next attack. As a bonus action, you can give yourself advantage on your next attack roll in the current turn. Um, oh, yeah. Can I do that? Uh, yeah, well, it's for in the current turn, so next round you can do that. I don't know where it comes from, but yeah, um, it's in your sheet. So I assume <laughs> oh. it's a thing. Um, so yeah, you can use a bonus action to give yourself advantage on your ranged attacks, which would be fricking handy. Yeah, uh, cool. And then Jude, mighty Jude Littlefeet. It is a it is an unearthed arcana feature, apparently. Jude cannot reach the, the map edge. You do have javelin. Yeah, I'm going to throw a javelin. Javelin is a fun word to say. Javelin. Um, do you move and then throw the javelin? Sort of like throw it on the run? Uh, yeah. <laughs> ah! Yes, I do. I love it. Do that. Jude is going to go up near Trish. Up near Trish. And Trish. then throw the javelin. Very well. A13 hits just. Well, a 12 just hits, so 13 hits. <laughs> Seven points of damage. Uh, this is on the same one? Yes. The one uh, the where are you aiming, Jude? His eyeball. Oh, shit. <laughs> Your javelin in the eye. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he takes the arrow in his shoulder Jesus. and sort of, ah, oh, God, where did, ah, oh, and then a javelin takes him clean in the head <laughs> and he just sort of goes rigid and like a board just collapses back down and the javelin is just sticking bolt upright in the ground um, and uh, yeah he dies you kill him He's I'm very, a murderous turns um, out he was gormless friend, friends that was Jude's first kill of the whole campaign <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say that. I'm pretty certain yeah. June hasn't killed anybody. Yeah, no. that is Jude's first kill, I believe, ever. Achievement <laughs> unlocked. Yes. You are now a murderer like everybody else. Mighty Jerbin. Uh, Jerbin installs ja new javelin to the, uh, what is it, Um Yeah. So, let's let's have a little breaklet. A breaklet uh, for us to work out how the Harabar works and what we'll do with the <laughs> javelins or <laughs> the Harabar. Um, you fucking beautiful people, the kittens and the storms and everybody who who <laughs> we've got a lot of subscribers. Meow, um, amazing! Uh, and don't forget to use your raid emotes and other roll for damage emotes um, that you get from being a subscriber. Super cool and useful. Um, yeah. And we will play the Academy of Xandar's little thing, a little advert in the break. Oh. I'm super excited. I haven't seen it. Are you ready for it? Fetch, um, fetch, take I it fucking way. Do it. Hi, I'm Karen and I am playing V. V is an elven rogue of the Shadow Kai variety. Um, so she's a little bit evil, but in a sort of blasé sort of a way. V could be described as an undead rebel. 
She's very pale. A little bit of a bluish tinge in there, but she's got a cool tap in one hand, some piercing. She's way more punk rock than I am. V has an interesting relationship with her parents, so the fact that they think her going here is a good idea immediately rings some sort of alarm bell for her. Um, but at the same time, she's open to new possibilities, new adventures, new things to steal. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nikolai and I will be playing Donny Carbone. Donny is a uh, rebellious punk with a heart of gold and a tongue of silver. Um, he is a con man in the streets of Elder York, but in the Academy of Xandar, he's just a student. Donny is a tabaxi who looks like an alley cat that got into several fights that he's lost. Um, with a little bit of like the the regalness of a tiger mixed in. Uh, he's beaten and battered, but keeps his head high. He's recently had a bit of a fling with a beautiful archfey, uh, who he thinks he is married to, but she has bestowed upon him many wondrous gifts, of which he is uh, very curious to take advantage of. Hi, I am Tristan, and I will be playing Basil Beryllium, who is a human barbarian uh, who is just ready to go out and experience the world. Big reveal! Oh, he's made of slime! He's a slime ooze man! Haha, <laughs> gotcha. Basil Beryllium is an ooze that ate a boy and then turned into the boy and is just so chuffed about it. Basil looks like if James Potter had a sordid love affair with Shaggy Rogers from Scooby-Doo. Um, uh, thick rimmed glasses, uh, little tiny um, spectacle lenses that he can adjust um, like a jeweler. Basil is made of ooze and slime and not meat. So he's worked really hard on making himself look like me. So he's got he's got eyes. They were the, the easiest thing to do because they're basically jelly. Um, skin was a little bit more difficult, uh, but what he's really proud of is hair. So whenever he can, Basil looks like he, he's got just a little bit of stubble, but bad stubble, like baby's first stubble. Hi, uh, my name is Ed. Um, I play Ty, who is a large snake man bard that just wants to make friends and, and jam out. <laughs> jam out? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Ty is a seven foot long snake. He is uh, green and yellow, uh, big uh, electric blue eyes. He looks very threatening, uh, but upon closer inspection, you'll see that he's actually just a, a real happy-go-lucky snake uh, that doesn't actually have a, a bad bone within him. So Ty doesn't really understand school. Uh, it, where he's from, things are done very differently, but he also doesn't like uh, his family and his society and, and where he grew up, so he's just excited to, to try something new and, and, and really get into the school environment and, and, and make friends and, and learn. Oh fuck. Fuck. What did I do? I think it's broken. I think I fucked up the stream. Oh fuck. Oh my god, this would have never happened if I was with Node 1 Internet. Holy shit, I am. That's right, I am with Node 1 Internet. Don't worry, we're fucking fine.
shit. Nah, it's happened again. I fucked it up. I fucked it right up. Nah, I've got no bitrate. Alright, look. Give me... Look, I'm just gonna restart the stream real quick. Hang on. Hang on. Ah, fuck. Um... No, you know what? It's fine. We're with Nerd One Internet, so we've been perfectly fine this whole time. And the funny thing about that is that if you were with Nerd One Internet too, you would never have internet troubles because they are the fastest and most reliable internet provider here in Perth. If you want to get your free month of Nerd One Internet, when you sign up, you can use the code DMGE in the checkout to get one free month. So go to nerdone.com.au and get your free month of internet. Mitch, we're coming back right now, and you can definitely say there is no one like Node One. You're back, That's class. Good. You're live. There's no one like Node One. We I are live. You are actually live. I'm not lying. Yeah. Hello, oh, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, oh, everyone. Hello, <laughs> everyone. Hi. Uh, it's nice to be back. It's good to be back. Um, show. We've worked out how we're going to do it. There you are, Firewing Mama. I hope you enjoyed that. So, <clears throat> my friends, firstly, I'm going to have to ask the lovely kitten. I'm not going to try pronouncing the first word, but kitten, could you do me the immense favor of rolling 1d4 in the chat? Uh, I believe if you type exclamation mark R1d4, then you will, uh, you will, uh, it'll come up with the answer for us. That will determine who, going from left to right, yes. E uh, oh, so, uh, exclamation mark, roll 1d4. I do apologize. Um, and uh, if it is a one, it will be Trish. And if it's a two, it'll be Nevermore. If it's a three, it'll be Helvig. And if it's a four, it'll be Jude. Oh, <laughs> what, no, my dear, roll 1d4. That one, yeah. <laughs> What's your <serum laughs> <do? laughs> We've almost got it's it. Not a three. It's not serums. It's kittens. Oh God, kitten! Man. I know it's it's programming. Who wants it? There we go. A three. three. It is Helvig. Helvig. Amazing. Oh, oh, God. Oh, no. Very well. Okay. Now, that it is. now, so it is. It is a three. Still a three. Okay. And now, okay. I roll one d twenty two because that's how many there are in the in the chat oh it's, my god it's a number five number so we start five. making any character what's happening? so yeah uh you might do i but there isn't any that kill you um however there is a couple that do other things so let's there have a look number five one two three four five. Oh, amazing that's actually positive <laughs> uh this is urail you really or you rail something like that do you want to show the video for it um <gasps> we have a video it's got a little animated show. oh wow that's so cool yes can you see it i can't see it there oh, it's, it is. On, it's oh, on stream there it is you really so the effect of this is a comet flies overhead well, actually, i'll i'll, I'll flavor it but uh, the player who drew the card gains a plus 10 to their ac but their armor breaks. But he doesn't have armor. I don't have armor. He doesn't wear armor. And I have plus 10. So you have a plus 10 to your AC. I am a Can spiky me? boy. I'm he so is a spiky. Spiky, spiky boy. No um, soft caps so, on him. So, Excuse me. Helvig, <laughs> My AC is 27. Helvig, you are running up this hill. <laughs> you are running up the hill. And one of the bandits. Uh, turns and shoots at you. It is, in fact, it is Horace, um, because it's his turn now. He is going to take a shot at you with his short bow. And he rolls a 19 on the dice, a pair of 19s. This arrow comes streaming in towards your face. You worry it's going to hit you. And then all of a sudden you begin to glow. And around yourself, all of your inner fireflies, they just explode out from you. And you, you glow like a giant firefly, surrounded by this incredible, beautiful light. And the arrow deflects off it. And when you reappear, 
from the, the um, astounding glow that is your fireflies. Your quills have turned to silver. And uh, they are now a very, very light. They, you can tell they are made of metal. Whoa. A short oh, of... Lorraine a Hedgehog? A short of oh, living metal. God. A short of living metal hedgehog. A silver porcupine. <laughs> metal Sonic. You metal just, Sonic, yeah. Just, like Wolverine. Sorry, 26. 26 <laughs> AC. Still a bonk. That is what I'm going for, Stormfell. Um, I believe Shonic actually there was a silver one, wasn't that? Wasn't that called silver? Um, that was just a I different see. hedgehog called silver. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, now you have a base AC of twenty seven. Twenty six. Twenty six. Good, good. So I need to roll the twenty six to hurt you. <laughs> what so what I really need to do is invest in area effect damage spells. Is what I need to do. Is what I need to do. Um, Thanks. And if I curl Thank into you, a ball, kitten. this is this is Kitten and Stormfell's fault, really. Um, the hunt for Josh the pirate. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, amazing. Wow. Thank you. There you go. So that was a waste of Horace's turn. Uh, next is Miles. Um, Miles, the Vulpin, he sees you coming up the hill towards him with death in your eyes, particularly Jude. Apparently, um, Jude has definitely got death in her eyes. And Miles draws his short sword and says, hurry up, Chance! And dashes down the hill towards you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gets to Jude. And he is going to attack you. He is going to make a multi-attack. So he makes two attacks. He's going to short sword you for the first, which misses. And then he's going to try again. 23 to hit Jude. I'm pretty confident that, that does it. would almost hit Helvig. Um, uh, for eight piercing damage. Oh, no, he's not. Reverse Iron Maiden. <laughs> yes, exactly that. You're... Eight, eight points mm, of damage? Yes. I will, I will work out what Sorry, the first I made. It's an incredible image. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm good now. Um, you're a, a Nidiam Niori, a reverse Iron Maiden. Um, yeah, so eight piercing damage on Jude, and then oh. it is... Thank you. Someone finally caught up. Uh, then, then it's Chance. Chance actually finally gets the door open and goes inside and takes cover. Oh, shit. Sneaky little jerby. Um Next is Helvig, the God. impermeable. <laughs> I'm still reeling from the fact my AC is 26. <laughs> Let me up. Yeah, so am I, buddy. So am yeah. I. I'm gonna walk I was over. really worried about you guys before. <laughs> Crit still hit. Yes, yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna God walk over Shilver. here. <laughs> Not really knowing what's happening. You, um, there is a, there is a downside. Um, you are oh, now effectively wearing heavy armor. Um, so you would have disadvantage on all stealth rolls in the future, I am afraid. But uh, other than that, there is very any any dexterity that. check like acrobatics and shit as well. Yeah. Think, oh, every uh, yeah. It's not heavy. Uh, it's just not. It's it's very. It's like um, mithril, but it's very. Uh, it's loud. Yeah, um, clank clank. He makes a clanking like noise, a, much like, like Jude when. Chime. Yeah, like I a wind over. chime, but much more aggressive, spiky. We have like they harmonize when we run next to each other. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I run clank clank. Over. Over. You do. And I'm gonna use. Eldritch Blast. Very well, you Eldritch Blast. Um, Wait, is there anyone running away? Sure, no, I just right. want to hug um, them. <laughs> <laughs> um, that no, I don't want to kill them with my silver spikes. Uh, yeah, you don't want to get them bloody. Um, yeah, Eldritch Blast. <sighs> Bam! Do it. <laughs> Natural one. Nope. You're still wow. getting over yourself. You're still very much getting over yourself. She's like, oh shit, he's a shiny Sonic thing. Uh, uh, um, you. Amusingly, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, Helvig, you you take you you miss. Um, yes. There isn't really an interesting way to say it. You are probably still uh, you've, your center of balance has probably shifted a little bit. You do weigh a bit more, 
Um, uh, so it's probably just sort of where you would normally be flat. You're now aiming slightly upwards. Uh, so you miss. Uh, then it is, unless you have a bonus action you want. To do. Uh, no one's hurt, yeah? Amusingly, also yeah. the curl up action ain't gonna work anymore. <laughs> I mean, is it, it, there's I mean, no point. There you can't no do point, it, there's just no point. If I want to flex and get 29 AC. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, yes, I will use one of my healing lights on Jude. Oh, sure. I love that Jude's name sounds like a, a note ocarina. blown into an For ocarina. Three. You heal three damage, Jude. 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 That is my turn. You do that, um, and it is it is your turn. Ivan is going to sort of flank out and take partial cover behind this um, cart over here. And uh, he's looked at Helvig and saw saw the uh, arrow of Horace just plink off you and gone like, nope. Um, and he is instead going to take aim at Trish, who is shooting back. However, Trish is also behind a cart. So actually he might shoot Nevermore. That would make more sense. Let's do that. Um, ah! <laughs> Nevermore! Um, so yeah, he, uh, Ivan is going to shoot at Nevermore. Tell me what. You Thirteen. Get. I've got fifteen AC. Yeah. Um, woo yeah. woo. So we go. Woo it's woo. Nevermore's turn. All right. Before before I have my turn, I really just need to know from Helvig. What's your like strength stat? <laughs> what's your strength and dex stat? I'm just curious. Because um, maybe Helvig should respect a barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> they go that like, what's the battle a barbarian rage? Barbarian warlock with an AC of nineteen, uh, uh, with an AC of twenty-six. Yeah. Yeah. The my battle rage. My strength one. is eight. <laughs> wow. And my dex is. You can, a, you can be a dex barbarian. My dex is fourteen. That's pretty good. Yeah. Dex, dex throws for a hedgehog. Yeah. I am going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 to here. I'm going to shoot a magic missile at the Jerbeen, and I'm going to shoot you... all three darts at oh, that Jerbeen. I see, yes. Uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, get out! That. Um, these, uh, these feathers streak and make a pretty much an L-shaped left turn, like a perfect 90-degree turn. They go to the door, turn right, and go in and um, take out the Jabin. You Twelve pretty damage. much yep. can't. Yeah, you were supposed to say mm. you pretty much can't roll low enough to not kill it. Um, yeah, you nice. you knock out Chance from his hiding place. That was a waste of a character. Okay, Trish. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm gonna. There is an angry Vulpin next to you. Well, I'm gonna scamper behind it. And it can stay angry while I stab it with stab my Stab it in the spine! Stab! Yeah. <laughs> Very Smack well. Smack bang up the pooper. <laughs> you do that, what? except that you don't do that. Except uh, that you... I do, because I have a reroll. Uh, <sighs> can I use it? Yeah, you can use your reroll. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'm feeling stabby. I'll I was want... about to say, if you wanted to use your bonus action to give yourself advantage on your next roll, you could do that. But you didn't well, need didn't... to. <laughs> um, so yeah, you get a 17. Um, which hits, you, yeah, you get some sneak attack damage. Hell yeah, I do. Ooh, oh, <laughs> shit. 13 damage uh, on on the guy. His name is Miles. Um, he's a quite a, a quite a handsome, stately looking uh, Vulpin dude, um, dude who takes, takes take exception to that. He really does. Uh, Jude, it is your turn. You have a Miles in front of you. Stab. You stab. Do you do any special kind of stab or you just stab the bastard? Um, I think just stab. Yeah. Just, yeah. A, just a regular stab. <laughs> because I think Jude's got other plans for the rest of the evening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Do it. Finish him. Fourteen? What do you do? Do you, think you do that? You don't do that. Uh, Fourteen. Ooh, that's a question. Equals beats, Jude. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yes, very good. Roll me some damage. For four damage. He did not enjoy that at all. He doesn't like either of you. If he likes one of you more than the other, it's Jude. Because he slit Jude up and also um, you didn't hurt him nearly as badly. And it's I now Horace's turn. Intimidating Horace... death stare. Yeah, you do that. Um, uh, Horace is going to come to his buddy's assistance. Now, Horace. Um, let's just check. Everyone does that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Does that mean there's no more soft gap? I mean, the gap is the, now the pretty. Are... There, there are still gaps. 
They're just. But they're no. not soft now. They're like. Oh. No, the gaps are soft. They're booby trapped. Um, but yeah, they're they're a lot more dangerous to get to. Oh, um, okay. They're firm, awesome. a firm but soft gap. Ah, <laughs> uh, weird. This is a weird day. Um, so Horace is going to short sword Trish. Jesus Christ. Oh, he's actually going to great club, but um, yeah, he doesn't hit you. Uh, ah. You duck ah. underneath it. That's right. Should have, used, should have used my DM's advantage, but that's okay. Um, yeah, you mi- he misses. And um, next is Miles, um, who's a bit put out by the whole business. He's going to attack Trish as well. He's going to short sword him as well. Come at me. A 20. Yeah. 20 probably does it for seven seven piercing. Seven piercing yeah. damage on Trish. Yeah. And then he's going to attack you again. How dare he? That's How very, ch- how very dare he. That's a crit. That's a 24. Should have saved that for Helvig. Uh, uh, crits, crits will hit. Um, so that's another 11. Oh, I'm, I'm unconscious. Oh, shit. Yeah. No! Trish, Trish, is, Trish is down. Down and bleeding. She's bleeding. She's bleeding pretty bad, boys. Uh, girl. Um, yeah. Uh, Helvig, it is your turn as Miles stabs you a couple of times and goes, Rah! Nobody <laughs> comes into my campfire. I don't know. I don't know what he really says. You. <clears throat> like, Nobody stabs me in the back twice. There, there you go. You That's fucking what? I run over. I, I, I fucking stab you, mate. That's what I fucking want. <laughs> Helvig gonna... swore? <sighs> Apparently so. I must have dropped off on Helvig. Or, or, or something else happened to him today. Mm. Um, something else meaningful happened in the last five minutes to him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the last that 20 too. seconds. Helvig, what do you do? All right. I'm gonna... You turn into the god of rage and death? <laughs> the, uh, I unlock my blood god tree. You do that. Uh, wait. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yes, I will use... Can I use a booster on a healing spell? Yes. I'll allow it. Cool. I will use cure wounds on Trish, and I will use my booster for it. Nice. Just a D6, if I recall correctly. Like a D6, yep. Nine. Nine plus a D6. Bam. That's good. Oh, damn it. Ten. Plus a D6. Ten plus healing. A D6. That's still pretty much good, uh, uh, Trish. Okay. But you don't even get to make a death save. You you are like you hit the ground and go <gasps> as you see. <laughs> hey, a shiny silver Helvig standing over you. Like Looking, the firelight, <laughs> the firelight is reflecting off his silver, uh, his newly silver quills. You actually probably hadn't noticed this yet because you were ahead of him when it happened. Um, so he, he's, this is the first time you've seen it and it's like a, a shiny monolith of a hedgehog is standing above you looking heroically daggers at the uh, the guy who struck you down and uh, you breathe in and a uh, as you breathe out a cloud of fireflies come out of your mouth I need a hero. and return to the soft gaps in between his armor i'm like um, swooning a little bit just to be a honest. little bit yeah and Instead then of he wings, drops it's you, he picks you up and shape. then drops you down and says are you all right my dear <laughs> now <laughs> I'm oh, not let us finish this as together. The reality is completely different. <laughs> <laughs> All of this is happening in Trisha's head. Uh, <laughs> this is the fever dream, dream of being a badly a, a lot of blood loss. All right, next is Ivan. <laughs> Ivan is going to. He's like, the hell is going on? Um, and, and he is going to. Um, ooh. I'm gonna say he's going to circle around and try and get a shot on Nevermore. Um, he's he's like, oh, don't you don't hide it from me so easy, motherfucker. Uh, he's going to. <laughs> it's a crit. <laughs> uh, so twenty three to hit Nevermore. He's just gonna crit That's everyone. That's gonna healthy. hit me. Yeah. Uh, so seven seven piercing. Seven damage. Okay. Boom. This is what happens uh, when the heroin bar fills. Oh shit! Ah, uh, bugger you! And I'm gonna shoot one back. Uh, obviously a firebolt. It is um, your turn. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna shoot a firebolt at the one that just shot me. So yeah, you do that. 
with a returning volley. Uh huh. Seventeen on 17 the dice. Seventeen hits, but a three Just is three damage. Not quite enough to reduce him. And to... I will go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty to there. Very well. You do that, Trish. Oh, you are on the ground. Uh, you are prone, but, but, you are awake, and you have ten hit points. Ten shiny silver hit points. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do do? I'm going to stand up is what I'm going to do. Good first move. I liked it. And Solid I'm going to stab some cunts. I'm going to stab Miles again. He uh, hurt me. He did. He's getting stabbed. I thought I just heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, wh- hey, wait, wait a second. I know that word. <laughs> yeah. Helvig will never be hit. Yeah, do it. Do 20. That'll do yeah. it. Uh, roll some, roll some damage. Uh, you definitely get the sneak. Um, right. Because, yeah, Helvig and. and uh, he thought I was Peter, down. Also, there. Six. Six damage. Uh, he takes another six. He's not quite dead yet, but he, he staggers backwards, holding a nasty gash in his side. Uh, and it's now. Uh, what do you, do you want to do? You could you have another thing you could do. I, I would like action. to use my bonus action to get out of the way because I almost cunning died. Action. So you can cunning action to disengage, which means you can move away for free. Yes, um, that's what I would like to do. So you do that. Uh, in what direction are you moving? Is it towards Nevermore? Uh, I cover behind the squishy wizard. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna stand with the feathery wizard boy over well, here. Well, actually, you, so you need to use half oh. of your move to get up. So you have okay. 15 foot left. So you can get to about here. Okay. Uh, I'm actually gonna go over here near this kind of shelter. Sure, you do that. Yeah. Uh, I next play goalie. Jude. Yeah, take cover behind Helvig and his shiny, shiny quail smart. quills. <laughs> Jude will stab. Stab him, Jude. Go, Jude. Come on, Jude. Oh, no. Come on, Jude. Damn it, Jude. No. God no. damn it, Jude. Um, yeah, uh, Jude tries to stab the guy as the, his previous quarry runs away. Um, uh, yeah, you don't, uh, is the short of that one. Um, I'm afraid, Jude, do you want to do anything else? Do you have any bonus actions that you could do? I don't know if I have any bonus actions. I don't think so. No. Um, we shall move on to Horace, Jude. If you have anything that you would like to do, um, shout out while I'm doing Horace and Never okay. Mi- and Miles. Horace will, first of all, he's going to... Um, he's going to try because he hasn't really fully like wrapped his head around exactly what the hell going on with um, Helvig. He is going to try and attack Helvig with his short sword. Um, crit. No, uh, that's a, almost a crit fail. Um, <laughs> that is a four. Breaks the sword. Oh. <laughs> it is a crit fail. It was a crit fail. He got a four. Uh, pity, it was nine bludgeoning damage. Um, there we are. Oh. Never mind. And then Miles is going to turn around and because he's like, ah, the hell with the stabbing me in the back. Um, and he tries to, he's actually going to try and bite you. <gasps> um, uh, that's an eleven, Jude. I'm pretty confident. He misses. I slap his face. <laughs> <laughs> you do that, and he sort of ow, and then he stabs, and then he slashes at you with his short sword. And he gets an eighteen. It does hit. Yeah, uh, for eight piercing damage. Okay. How are you looking, Jude? Very, very sore. <laughs> <laughs> um, Helvig, it is your turn. Stop hurting my friends! At I'm what gonna... point do you go Super Saiyan? <laughs> <laughs> when they're we all dead need, on the floor and the we power We only of need 500 more subs for another Haribar, guys, as well. Just FYI. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna attack the one attacking Jude. Sensible. With like it. A. Dagger. Very well. You stab him. Stab. I'm not hitting Steve. anything. Oh, wow. I'm, just, well, he's I'm not, so heavy. I'm he's, like, well. he's the god of murder. He's he never so said he was any good at it. Um, <laughs> it's a real shame. That's that's two crit fails in like four rolls. Uh, good. I don't want to kill things. No, that's true. You don't. And you, well, you're certainly not managing it. I love it. You're this, you have this pacifist who's completely immune to any damage as well. He's like the perfect medic. It's a sanctuary <laughs> spell now. Yeah, uh, that's Helvig. Helvig, do you want to move? Because you could probably risk an opportunity attack for no worries. Um, 
Let's see, I want to cover for Trish. So kind of like... Jude is actually more injured at this point. Yeah, but if I, like, move... Um... Jude will die. <laughs> Jude will die. Jude is going to die. Oh, I will go... <laughs> oh, I think this is the... Oh, I think this is a good spot. Fuck! Jude's I will not move. I will not move. You I stay. will stay okay. there. Ivan is going to uh, come around the rock and he's actually going to come up over to here to get to gain cover, and he is going to take a shot at Jude oh. to help his to help his buddy. Uh, he gets an eight, oh. gets an eight, missing quite uh, quite quite significantly. <clears throat> In fact, he almost hits Nevermore, but he doesn't. Uh, <laughs> next up, it's Nevermore. Nevermore is going to shoot a fire bolt at Le Foxe. Le Foxe. <laughs> Le Foxe, a woman. That's um, well, it's a, a dude, it's a man. and it's it's, a man. it's dude. Yep, uh, yep. sixteen for uh, five damage. Ah, oh, you he catches light and screams as he burns to death. Um, <laughs> where... ah! Huzzah! Yeah. He... Five. Ah! Ah, no! Ah, why? Why the pain of this? Uh, I wish it was not covered. I hope I... I'm glad I'm not covered in feathers. Ah! And he does. <laughs> <laughs> um. Trish, and I move behind there with my movement. You do right. that. I'm gonna use my bonus action to aim real good, oh. and I'm gonna fire an arrow at the closest map hatch. You do that. I will. You get a sneak attack as well. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So advantage on this. You. Uh, a ten or a nine, neither hit. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> well. <laughs> Head. Look, I'm still even... pretty concussed, okay? Yeah, yeah, you only just woke up from death. So, yeah, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> Jude, it's your turn. Oh, you know, death. Oh, Jude, just death. I'm just fine. Jude is going to javelin the map pitch in front of me. Horace? This this one here? Yes. Yeah, okay. So the, uh, for the uh, eyeball again. It might be for the eyeball. Okay. Shit. <laughs> Roll damage. Roll damage. I won this. Seven. Seven. It's good. Amusingly, it would have killed the other, but not this one. Um, yeah, you, he, he, you, you, you cop him in the side of the head. Uh, unfortunately, like a, a javelin to the eyeball would be an insta kill, so uh, you don't get that because he doesn't reduce his hit points. But you do a nasty gash. You um, it sort of you definitely nick the eyeball, but it bounces off his skull and scrapes all the way along. So he's got this huge gash right along the side of his head. Looks very <laughs> painful, and he's bleeding badly from his eye. He probably Jude you laughs probably, at that. <laughs> you probably blinded him, and and Jude giggles adorably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at his eye! It's hanging out of his head. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's actually skewered on the end of the javelin. That, uh, <laughs> sort of, uh, like a bizarre. <laughs> Stop laughing! It's creeping me out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, I, I, uh, okay. Next is Horace, the guy who just lost an eye. He's like, "You what?" And he charges you. He's like, <gasps> "He's gonna. He's having you for that." Uh, <laughs> Seventeen. For dude. Yes. Oh my yes. Seventeen is my armor class. Um, no! You cop. You cop five bludgeoning damage as he Dude. beats you around the head with his great club. Dude passes out. No. no. Oh. Um, to this guy who has only got one eye, um, <laughs> because Jude took the other and then giggled. <laughs> uh, Helvig, it is your turn. The guy who just murdered your friend is uh, standing over here. I mean, she's oh. she's unconscious. I am angry. Oh dear. Uh oh. Oh shit. First of all, I'm gonna use my. Well, Josh, hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> I wanna. <laughs> you have unleashed the Use a bonus action to use a healing light, and for my action, can I like? I'm gonna attempt to. Roly poly into him. I'm gonna attempt to like jump and like try and like make him prone, but because my quills are heavy, I'm gonna land spines first. 
So you wanted to cannonball I'll... into him with your back. Yeah. Quill's out. And, not, and I'm going to use my natural 20 for it. I thought you, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you said that. I'm very, very happy for everything that's about to happen. Um, Don't so do Helvig, it! Helvig body slams this dude. Can you describe to me in vivid, <laughs> almost unpleasant oh, no. detail no. How, <laughs> how you use your newly acquired silver spines to brutally, brutally, this is the god of blood and death. I am. Murder this person. <laughs> He has Somebody... four hit points left. I'm saying it works, and he dies. This is an auto crit. Yeah. I'm say I'm, I see Jude being like just got down by the guy with a not. He's got an almost a missing eye, so I try to like jump and push him away, but I get way too much height for way too little distance, and I kind of spin in the air. And I kind of just impale him all with his spine. Him. <laughs> He's like, uh, 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 and it's very. The noise is somewhere between a, a squeal and a squelch. Oh. It's it's a it's a squelchal. Like a juice press. A juice press, yes. Um, oh, yeah, flawed. exactly. <laughs> so do I pin myself to the ground now with his corpse? And uh, John I... Cena! Yes. <laughs> John Cena! Sad. Yeah, and shotgun not pulling you off the <laughs> I'm gonna um, Yeah, yeah so helping like you are now five. prone. Um, he yeah. is dead, and you're healing like Jude. For five, yes. Uh, yeah, okay, you do that. You are now, what? Well, I don't know why I'm turning him on his side, he's dead. Helvig, you are now prone, lying next to Jude. Jude gets five healing points. Jude is back <laughs> up to five. We need, I'm going Jude, to yell out. you roll yeah. over and look at um, Helvig. Helvig is lying on his back with his head pointing up at you and he's pointing, he's just reached out and grasped your hand. And there is a guy oh. underneath him, and he's sort of like lying on a bed of his own quills, but they are very much out. And you can see the, as you lie there looking at Helvig, a trickle of warm liquid runs down to your, to like your head. You can feel it resting against the fur of your head, the top of your head. Uh, next is Ivan's turn, and Ivan just, Ivan sees and goes, holy shit. Horace! Ah! Uh, surrender! I do! I, I do! Oh god, I, I surrender! Uh, <laughs> oh good, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll interrogate you. Uh, uh. He, he lies, he actually curls up in a ball of his own. Um, he just sort of props himself against the wheel of the cart that he is next to and just wraps his arms around his legs and just starts shaking and, and rolling backwards and forwards. Hmm. Dude, Hands are oh, shaking. Jude, Jude goes up to him and, and starts petting him and he's like, it's okay, you're going to be okay. You're alive, that's a good thing. I don't know that I am. No, you're alive. Your friends are dead, but you're alive. Oh, yeah. Everything's going to be, everything's going to be okay. Cause you're <laughs> with Jude. Pay the ocarina for them. So. Everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> Clip it. Clip it now. <laughs> okay. So the fight is over. Uh, the last, the last person has been um, overawed. I think is the word. To the point where they just <laughs> now singing. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. <laughs> okay. It's gonna be okay. Oh, fuck I it can up. hear, I can hear very high pitched laughter from another room. <laughs> uh, oh no, it's us. I can hear our laughter from Karen's oh. computer. Um, all right, so. Uh, we're out of I, combat. We're out of turn initiative I'm order. I, I wallow. You in. Okay. Um. So Helvig, how do you get up? I don't. I'm pinned <laughs> to the ground right now. <laughs> You're gonna need help. Um. As as you lie there, Helvig. Um. The guard captain who you ran past the gate and out of the gate and said, "I'll follow you with some men. I'll rally some guys and we'll come after you." They run up. 
uh, a, 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 a small group of uh, perch guard, maybe a dozen of them run up, but they, they are like, and two of them immediately go to Ivan, where Jude is sort of, I don't know. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> and, um, with Jude. And Jude is good. Um, Jude is many things. Uh, yeah, you do those things. And uh, Ivan is still very much just rocking backwards and forwards. The two perch guard rock up and oh, they, level, they level halberds at him, but they, they're like, what happened to this one? He's just a little bit traumatized because <laughs> I stabbed one of his friends in the eye with a javelin and he died. Uh, and that one over there got spiked by uh, by Helvig, kind of like a me. He's still stuck. Could you help him? Um, yeah, two of them, including the guard <laughs> captain, <laughs> go over. And they were like, they, so uh, out of respect for the terrifying uh, hedgehog, hedge person, um, they like, cover their eyes and offer a hand each to help Helvig up. And uh, they pull you up, Helvig, and as you stand, you notice a very heavy weight on your back. Still there, isn't he? <laughs> and, and, and she goes, don't look. Yep. It's, <laughs> it's okay. It's, are you all right? <laughs> I'd like. I'm fine, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll be okay. Helvig, can you make me a wisdom save? Um, <laughs> don't look at me! <laughs> 16. Uh, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. And uh, as you uh, as you stand there, um, you just try and look at the guard captain who was just like, it's going to be all right. You did, a, you did a really crazy good job. Good, well done, well done. And then you feel a load off your shoulders, um, as, literally, as, as the guards, mm. as the guard captain's voice soothes you in a very gentle fashion, and two of her friends firmly but gently remove the body of the guy you killed with your spines. Oh, what a back. fucking mess! <laughs> and uh, the captain looks around and says, "Everything's yeah. going to be okay." That's great um look this one's a this one's a suspect this one is a very much a criminal um we mm -hmm. will be taking him into custody and ivan says please please just take me take me somewhere safe a prison a jail cell somewhere i can be alone <laughs> and Would you like a muffin? no no <laughs> i mean yes but not from you <laughs> oh uh, it's a bit rude he doesn't respond. <laughs> he just doesn't respond. Uh, I, I want to ask the. Should... You go. Oh, I want to ask the map patch a question before they take him away. Oh sure. Do you have any more attacks planned? This was clearly very well thought out. Do they have any more attacks planned? Uh, I'm probably. I, I'm not very high up the command chain. Um, as far Is as I Ray know. No, um, Frey, uh, well, she's the commander of this assault. She'd know. She's the what? The commander, um, she, she, yeah, she's the one who led the assault. Frey Meriden? Mm hmm You know her? Okay, yes. Well, can we, can we understand, given that it's being said in Mapatch, is the question? Um, well, Jude's it question wasn't. It Jude speaks a... methods. Oh wow! It, no, it's it's okay. Fine. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it's hard to tell with AJ. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, the initial question might well have been in my patch, but Jude did ask. Um, Got it. I'm happy that it would be in just normal, common, humble folk, unless Sorry. Trish yeah. specifically said it in my patch. No, I Jude? said common, common tongue. Yeah. Okay. I wanted everyone to hear the answer. Uh, yeah, um, the uh, the captain goes, good, good, good idea, good question. Um, yeah, he's a bit of a peon, a bit of a low level peon, probably doesn't really know. Um, <sighs> Worth a try. Yeah, no, take him away. Um, and uh, the uh, the captain that you knew, that you saw on the wall, uh, and a lot of other people now are actually coming out as well. Um, you hear this streak um, calling for healers and um, checking the bodies of the fallen. Um, <clears throat> most are. Uh, 
Uh, most out here are um, not bandits. These are generally assumed to be. There's, there's a few perch guard who would have been caravan guards, um, and uh, they are fallen. A couple seem to still be alive, and uh, medics are seeing to them. Um, <clears throat> what do you do? I help. I heal. Yeah? Yeah, I do help you, heal. Do oh. uh the guy before he th gets taken away, I lay my I, I I put my hands on him and I heal him a little bit. Okay, how many of your he lay on hands do you? Just give one. Him? Just, Just one. Just a little pick me up. Um. Yeah. Can you roll me a charisma? <laughs> sure. A charisma check. Yeah. Saving unless you're or? unless you no check. Oh, um. Yeah, unless you're proficient with with uh, with religion. Hmm. Nope. Okay. Just charisma check. Then. 19? He seems calm. He seems like you, you go over and you just gently place your hand on his... Where, where, can you, where would you touch him? Where would you place your hand? His face. Show me on the his map face. edge where you would touch him. On his face. Um, his my, my, my little pores on his face. What do you say? Sometimes good people do bad things but you can be a good person. And I believe in you. So get better and do good in prison. And uh, he goes, thanks. Um, and it looks like a, a load has just been shifted off his shoulders and he, he seems less absolutely pissing terrified. Um, and he is taken away. Bye -bye. Um, can we just have a group huddle really quickly, everybody just here, all four of us? You should yep. you should have um, put with me. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's what I was about to point out. Oh. What? <sighs> You're magnificent. Uh, uh, what? Have you have you not noticed what happened? Uh, I don't. They're silver and red. <laughs> Yep, there's an eyeball on that one. <laughs> <laughs> You're really sparkly, Helvig. Like my sword. I was going to go up Think. and flick a claw on one. Just a talon and see what happens when I flick a talon uh, to one of the spikes. The, it makes the, uh, the tang noise of a, a, a uh, blade or a, a hit, hitting, hitting a piece of metal. You they just... are not... They're not so sharp that if you press if you press your hand against them with a degree of force you wouldn't puncture yourself yeah like better not, nails the thing it well even, even just a single one even just a single one you couldn't it would take a degree of force to actually push them through something they're not razor sharp but You're in they massive are of trouble if we fight a magnet helvig i tell you that right now <laughs> <laughs> why what happened Great are, idea. Are these, and i kind of like, <laughs> Reach back. Do I do I feel them now that they're actually metallic and not the quills that I used to know? <laughs> um. So when you touch them, they still bend. They still have oh. a degree of movement to them the way they used to. They feel in all ways like your old ones, except that, like even there's a couple that were broken off that you were aware of because you're they're, they're part of you. A couple of them snapped off, like at some point in the in your life. They are also sort of blunt and shorter. They, these are your quills that are just hardier metal now, uh, but they're made of a sort of yeah a, a metallic living matter. Um, you wouldn't necessarily know never more that the whether or not they're magnetic. Yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, I know you're being silly, but yeah, it like um, it, is the for, for actual information. <clears throat> is the front of Helvig still exposed? Very yes. yes. Okay, so there is like an area. That, okay, yeah. It's just They're from the so back. Pretty, how big? Hit it from the back. Thank you. Really pretty. Are you okay? Do you need a hug? Don't hug me, please. <laughs> I hug him. The On way the front please. Side. Um, yeah. Just make a, a the a, yeah. I'm not even gonna make a roll for this. Um, mm. You hug him. Trying going to be hug. okay. Go with you. <laughs> Boop. Thank you. Um, you. We should probably go back into the accommodation and rest the evening, perhaps. So, 
Um, actually, uh, a significant group of the defenders are gathering around you and the the, the caravan. They're, they're helping the wounded, they're tending the wounded. But mm. um, <clears throat> uh, as the wounds of the injured are being tended, the guard captain uh, who you saw up on the wall, the Strig, yep, um, yep. is uh, swings up onto a nearby branch to make herself visible to the crowd. These bandits strike at our home, at our livelihood, and at our dignity as citizens of the wood. Will I say no more? The time has come for us to stop this menace once and for all. Who's with me? And uh, there is the, the crowd of mostly perch guard, but several of the citizens of the, the wood and the uh, citizens of older heart. Um, it's probably about 50-50 split between sort of just people and um, actual trained military. Uh, there is a roar of yeah, it's gonna be blah, 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 blah. Um, and uh, a sig- not not a small amount of people look to you guys as well. Like um, indeed, one of them who looks to you particularly, uh, Nevermore. Can you make me a history check? I can absolutely do that for you, good friend. Please, thank you. It'll be very nice. I enjoy this. It's 26! Oh yeah, goodness. you remember the fuck out of who this is. So, <laughs> you know it's He super ate well. wheat beaks for breakfast? All right. 13 years ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, so this is actually a... Um, this person you recognize, um, and can I get the picture veg up in chat of Riffin? This is Riffin, a... F- a an old adventuring buddy of your dad's. Oh shit! Oh, Riffin, is Riffin so the cute. Ash Knight. Um, Riffin the Ash Knight is an official character in the Humblewood to the point where I have a mini of him. <gasps> this is this is the mini. This is it. Look at him. Glorious. I need to paint him. Oh, I will yeah. paint him this week, and I will show you guys next week. Um, Riffin. Riffin, Riffin the Ash Knight, and he says, Ah. He actually, he walks over to you and he says, Laz? Ah, oh, it's you, boy. Ah. Nope, quite a bit younger than that old man. <laughs> this took you there, old lad. Ah, you'll be joining us, I assume. Good to see you, boy. You're doing well. Ah, uh, yes, yes, <clears throat> yes, we are. You are yes. adventuring on your own self now. I've, you? I've found myself an incredible group of companions. Uh, I thought you, you might see. have. You're coming along on this wee jaunt then, I suppose. What was it? Rule 16. Never give your opponents a chance to rally. <laughs> that is 100% what my father did say, Rule 16. Of and course, of course, you'd know all the rules having been I... around him so long and him creating them for, you know. Yeah, he and I, we did a few together. My own personal favorite, don't forget. Rule 44, never give a sucker an even break. <laughs> ah, father. How, have you seen him recently? I've, it's been, it's been a, a hot Nay, thing nay, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen Laz for many, many years, unfortunately. Mm. I think probably last time I was at your estate was the last time I saw your da. Oh, that's right, and we were out on the lake. Yeah, um, we went for oh, a sail. Beautiful. That was incredible. It's yes. a good day. Oh, 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 apologies. Everybody, how rude of me. Ah, uh, please. This is a friend of my father's and a former companion, adventuring companion, a riff. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Riffin, uh, the Ash Knight, they some some call me. You'll be joining us, friends. You'll be joining us when we, we, we're going to take the fight to the enemy, aren't you? Yeah, come on then. And um, he sort of raises his claw to the sky and everybody around is sort of like, oh, fuck yeah, the, the Ash Knight, the famous Riffin, the Ash Knight, and these new adventurers, Lazarus's son, apparently. Amazing. Yeah, they're going to save us all. They're going to come and we're going to take the fight to the bandits now. Um, in the morning. <laughs> nay, nay, nay. Ah, you don't give him a chance to rally, lad. Come on. Dude Littlefoot here. From the Littlefoot tribe. Pleasure to meet your acquaintance, lass. You too. Um, Dude, he has an alternative plan regarding an attack. And that includes you continue pursuing them but this little stealthy team are going to infiltrate. Aye, aye, that could work, that could work. Um, just Josh is telling you there would be time for a short rest on the way, just FYI. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sensing yeah. we, uh, we need to have a rest can, before can, we engage can, in any more fighting, yeah. please. Yeah. R- riffin, 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 uh, do you mind if I tap, 
uh, in private to my companions. You, you understand the bond that you, you I, share with I, fellow adventurers, adventurers, you know. I, I sure, absolutely. I, 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 I don't wish to speak for everyone. We'll rally the troops, shan't we, lass? You, you keep doing that, yes. Claire, go get the rest. see you again. It's good to see I, you again. I'll, I, pat, yeah. um, I'll turn around and crouch down. I really, uh, but as soon as everybody has walked away and we're, we're private, I really don't want to go back out there. <laughs> no. Is anybody else feeling that with me or what? Hurt. He was bleeding from this wound. I don't know if it's a problem, but it's. Oh shit, I've still got a fucking arrow in me. Oh god. (laughs) (laughs) Trish, 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 Trish. First of all, did you know any of the people that we just attacked? And secondly, how do you feel about this situation? I, I didn't recognize anyone that we were fighting with. And I don't feel great about this situation. I mean, I don't want to be insensitive. I like you, Nevermore. But you didn't choose to be your father's son. That guy chose to be his friend. And I question anyone who chooses Lazarus's company. Why? What has my father done that I don't know? He was brutal. (laughs) If he were fighting with us, that map hatch would be dead. He didn't take I surrender for an answer. He he casts spells and asks questions later. And if someone got in his way, well then, they must have been a bandit. I'm sorry, I... I don't want to lie to you, but the truth i'm gonna stand up i'll nod to you and i'll turn around and i'll walk over to riffin riffin question yeah lad if my father was faced with a bandit who was uh, offering up to surrender what would my father have done ah well it depends on the situation i suppose how dangerous is the bandit it's just a bandit just a bandit, uh, probably not too dangerous. Uh, well, they're all they say something on the like... line. They say something on the lines of, "I've got two kids at home." Most of them say that, boy. <laughs> I understand. What would my father do? Oh, uh, your dad was not one for taking prisoners very often. Uh, it wasn't beyond the call of possibility, but I'd say. Uh, when you fought as many bandits as he and I did. This was, uh, you learn not to trust him. The number of times he got stabbed in the back by someone you take him prisoner. I mean, that was one of the first, I think it's, what was it? Rule number eight, never turn your back on a surrendered foe. Ah, uh, so many rules. Thank you. Please continue what you're doing, Griffin. And I'll I, walk I... back. <clears throat> um... Look, we could go and see what happens. Part of me wants to head back into the the city and say we'll join them shortly and just not go. I do still want to help. I just think we should be cautious. I Maybe also we'll be... don't think that going charging in with our own army is a good idea. Tactics-wise, if they have taken things and they're regrouping, there could be a bigger group of people waiting for us. Um, Jude, can I get you to make a tactics roll? So it's an intelligence with advantage. Mm-hmm. Tactics roll. 14. Um, they are all heavily laden. Um, you also know that, <clears throat> uh, yeah. Of their unit, a good degree of their unit cohesion had been destroyed, had been upset by the, the way that they were withdrawing. Uh, the fact that they were heavily laden with loot, um, uh, they would already fought a battle, so they're quite tired. Um, any withdrawing they're doing will probably be somewhat piecemeal, fractured, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> So I'm, this isn't like it's you're not wrong. A lot of what you're saying isn't wrong, um, but 
if you pursue fast enough, they won't have time to regroup, which Trish. is the argument that um, Riffin yeah. is making. I just don't think it's a good idea. And I also don't think, I know that I killed someone today and it's, um, I, I don't know how I feel about it yet, but I, I wanted to say that more death is not a good thing. And we already have fire and death coming. So Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Potentially more death is what we might be going out there to avoid. We might be able to... I, I just... After talking to you, Trish, and seeing what kind of person you are, and talking to Kesh, I don't... I'm not... I'm not my father, and I'm not going to go in like that. We're going to analyze the situation and potentially find a better outcome that doesn't involve bloodshed. So we infiltrate. We go in disguise. Hmm. We become bandits. Hmm. Um, So Trish, what do you you say, Trish? If someone has to deal with the bandits, I would rather it be us. Agreed. Um, You would know also that at least a hundred of them escaped. Yeah. Probably near 150. And how many people are with us right now? Probably about, uh, probably about 100 at least. Hmm. Um, But some of them are like, about about half of them are a trained military force. I Uh, say we go. You you would have a good advantage. Yeah. Would be a, a fair bet. Particularly with Riffin there. You know that Riffin is a soldier of quite significant caliber. Mm. <clears throat> I guess we should I guess we should yeah, let's take an angry mob with us to negotiate peace. Well, <laughs> said nobody ever. <laughs> um I th- have you seen Beauty and the Beast? Mm. Uh, cool. Um I actually am going to call it that. I think yeah. that is a good spot to to leave it, that that conversation. Um so, yeah, uh, heavy, heavy ending to the sesh, guys. Well done. Mm. Oof. Big, big time. Um, big stretch. Yeah, big I'm torn. I. Yeah. yeah, I think we actually need to take a to have a little minute to sort of figure out how our characters would proceed, which is why it's a, why we will stop there. Yeah, yeah it's um, tricky. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's torn, and I will have to obviously replan an entire second sesh because um, yeah, the next thing it probably may not happen um, because I love what you're doing. We'll, so we'll start at our <clears throat> convo next time. Mm, yeah, um, and uh, yeah, I have I have my ways. So thank you everybody for playing. You guys are amazing. That was a really cool sesh. Um, thank you, chat, so much for watching. Um, thank you, thank you, Kitten and Stormfell for all the subs. Um, that was amazing as well. Um, thank you, just generally, chat. You've been really good today. I've been, I've loved, I have it on on my second screen, so I get to see everything that people are saying. Fucking brilliant. I'm really, really enjoying it. Thank you to our amazing producer, Veg, um, for doing such a fantastic job behind the scenes. Um, Thank you guys for filling up the Harrow bar because that that was uh, look. There's only about four options that end well. You got <laughs> one of them. I'm I was actually right. a bit pissed off. I really wanted something bigger. <laughs> I was like, right. one of them. One of them is one, uh, every, one person loses like one d four of each of their intelligence stats. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> I hope I don't get that. I'm stupid to begin with. <laughs> yeah, um, that's uh, yeah, that's the other end of the spectrum of how terrible it can be. That would um, be a fucking nightmare for me. <laughs> it would be pretty distraught for Jude because that would reduce Jude's intelligence to the point where they might not be able to talk. Yeah, it's how Tig happened. That is actually how. <laughs> <Tig happened. laughs> No, um, Jude. <laughs> it takes a while to fix it too. Jude learns just to communicate through a crane. <laughs> oh, yes. Two two so. Two two for yes. Um, so uh, we're gonna do our favorite moments, um, and I'm gonna start. Um, I think it would be mean to start with Dan. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. So let's. I actually let's start with Jude. 
Um, <clears throat> and we're going back to the the dread the dreaded GM's way of doing this because I think it's the best. So we will everybody will do uh, my uh, your own personal favorite moment, and then everybody will go around the circle and we'll give them our favorite moments as well. And if we can have favorite moments in chat, that would be great. So, <clears throat> uh, AJ, what was your favorite Jude moment? Oh God, um, singing singing to the traumatized man after brutally murdering his friends. Um, Jude is a curious, curious Mad. character. Mad. I don't even know what, what Jude does sometimes. <laughs> I watch it later and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> this what is, is so this? traumatizing. Yeah, love it. Um, Rachel, what was your favorite Jude moment? I love the Ocarina show. It was, it was beautiful. Took my breath yes. away. <laughs> Fantastic. I I loved that because the dice agreed. Yeah. Die. I love it when <laughs> the dice agree with you, and you're like, "This should not work. This should be awful." <laughs> and it was. I was like, "Perfect. You crit failed it. Amazing." I didn't um, want to reroll because it was. No, um, it was perfect. Perfect. It was perfect. Um, like you could have made it maybe quite good with a booster. You could have made it perfectly serviceable. But um, yeah, no, still Ooh. amazing. Uh, Mitch, what was your favorite Jude moment? Uh, the part that that got <clears> me was definitely the "It's okay," <laughs> just mid song, just the the one little hoot. Uh, I just, yeah, yeah, that got me absolutely. Dan, favorite Jude moment? Um, it might be coupled with Trish, but when they were sleeping, and then like the yes, yeah, oh, oh I was that oh, was. Uh, incredibly wholesome beautiful lovely um my favorite jude moment um was actually it was the de it, it was the detail of uh, the healing hands on the face and like what you said to him i was like wow she's a good person yeah it was it was i, I i'm still morally conflicted about jude but yeah she like she jumps massively backwards and forwards um little rage monster um <clears throat> yeah great uh what do we have from chat uh spa day um uh the great as the l says um oh yeah as the great l says over on the dreaded gm you're your own worst critic so let us be your biggest fans <laughs> <laughs> Mamba. Um, <clears throat> I saw one from Kitten as well. Um, All right, how the fuck do you say Memenemenemeni? Memenemeni. Memenemeni. All right. It might be Nemo Meme. Nemo Meme. It's Nemo Meme. A Nemo Mimi, what up, Nemo Mimi? Uh, thank you very much. Ne Nemo Meme. <laughs> what did Nemo Meme do? Oh, um, said something nice about Nevermore. My favorite, my favorite, favorite, moment, my favorite moment is actually when Nevermore looks around and interrupts himself mid sentence to shout about the arrow sticking out of him. <laughs> it's a brilliant use of sudden humor to enlighten this tragedy of the scene. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, cool. So actually, let's do Nevermore's favorite moments. What what was our favorite? Oh, um, Ju a kitten said Ju's toot toot, and the javelin in the eye was um, Bedger's favorite. Um, so yeah, let's talk about let's talk about Mitch. Mitch, what was your favorite Nevermore moment? Uh, waking up and yelling out poverty. Um... <laughs> <laughs> poverty. <laughs> <laughs> it was I mean, a nightmare. What a nightmare. I assume what a you're having a nightmare. Yeah. Seriously, uh, and also. Initially, the steering everybody clear of the Golden Horn in, partly because I didn't want to be brought down, but at the same time, understanding that they would be uncomfortable in such a setting. Sure. Um, and I guess never more actually thinking of other people, you know? Yeah. So sure. Okay. That would be it. I, I liked it. I, I like that one was interesting for me because I couldn't tell if it was legit. I couldn't tell if it was Nevermore just not wanting to be embarrassed by his friends or if it was Nevermore actually oh, caring. It was column A, column B for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, uh, let's say, Dan, what do you reckon? Best Nevermore moment. That's what I was going to say, but I'll go with my, for sake of variety, I'll go with my second option, and that's that Nevermore actually likes the Ocarina. <laughs> Even though <laughs> yes. Yes. That was so cute. I Damn like it, that. Helvig, you weren't supposed to be listening. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, my, favorite, doesn't know that. my favorite Nevermore <laughs> moment was definitely the conversation between the two of them when he remembered that he was actually still badly burnt. Um, mm. And when Helga yeah. came and knocked on the door, that was genuinely charming for, from both of you. Um, but yeah. I think particularly it was slamming the door in his face at the end of it. So good night, bam. All right, get the fuck out of hell, Vic. Yeah. I want to go to sleep. <laughs> um, Love you, just, what? <laughs> Yeah, love you. Bye. Um, sleep well. Uh, yeah, it was that was lovely. Um, Rach, favorite Nevermore moment. Spa day, spa day, spa, 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 day, spa day. Yeah. Yes, you've been saving that. Yes. Um, so yeah. much energy. Love Solid. it. Solid. Solid. Needs um, to happen. AJ, yes. favorite Nevermore moment. Um. I think my favorite uh, Nevermore moment was him attacking the other Jobin and saying, uh, stop giving Jobins a bad name. Yeah. You give Jobin a bad name. Bad name. Pew pew. Shot um, with a magic missile. <laughs> but you're too late. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, we need that song. Um, uh, Ryan Westfall, get on it. Um, Karen does comedy covers of songs. Um, so that's that's our Nevermores. What have we got from chat? Let's go to the fuck, I mean, gate. I'm swearing a lot and also <laughs> focusing on attacking the filthy peasant Jabin breaking into the tower. <laughs> um, uh, I just like to take a moment to appreciate the fact that the team cooperates so well and somehow understands that Nevermore is just so polite until such time that he feels the need to tell someone to fuck off out of his room. And then Helvig <laughs> becomes reverse Iron Maiden superhero. Um, yeah, great, glorious. Uh, we have any others? Let's go to the fuck <laughs> I mean, okay. Um, light walking up and gelling out. Um, Nevermore character development was on point tonight from Vegemite, agreed, absolutely agreed. Um, Let's do, uh, let's do, we've had Jude. Um, I think the, uh, the thing I love about Jude is that she is the first to start stabbing, but she is also conflicted about killing things. Um, I love that we've only just discovered that. In fact, that's probably one of my favorite things about Jude from this session was that we only just discovered that she's actually worried about killing people because she's never done it before. Um, but then she giggles. Yeah, but then the giggling, uh, the terrifying, terrifying giggling. Uh, right, we'll do Dan, your favorite Helvig moments. There's been some big day. It's a day, day for Helvig. A day of fucking days, as Reese and I would say. It was a lot. The most, I was going to say the checking in on Nevermore, but honestly, just the, just the murder. <laughs> <laughs> made a Around baby. The, the oh, aftermath man. of, like, the... Don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> oh, yes. It's on me, isn't it? It's on me, isn't it? On me. <laughs> That was like, the corpse. I think, yeah, your your role play is so excellent. You 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 gotten into the mind of Helvig delightfully well. The meat tenderizing cannonball. I I, I my own personal Helvig moment was definitely yeah. You know, I love a solid use of a nat twenty. I'm actually I rarely actually compliment gameplay. But um, yeah, your use of the nat twenty in that moment that is definitely what Helvig would have done. You figured out exactly how to utilize it in a truly epic way. Um, as as Bridge is saying now, Dan using my Nat 20 for the epic body slam. Perfect. Yes. yes. I got you, Bridge. Yeah. Thank you for the natural well 20. Thank you. Um, I, I love that mine... Helvig has a has a heal that he just ain't gonna need. <laughs> yep. Very true. No, it's for other people, Josh. Sure. Uh, AJ. Um, I'm going to piggyback off of yours in, mm. in a slight way because um, I was going to say that Helvig uh, or, or Dan has used both his natural 20s when Jude has been injured. Yeah. Um, his first one was when Jude was swallowed by the toad and this is the second time that he's gone like 
angry murder hedge because um, Jude's been in trouble. Angry so, murder hedge. Oh. Murder hedge. <laughs> so I think it's a really cute um, friendship that the two of the, them have and that hmm. like that is what drives Helbig to like not be a pacifist yeah. is Jude being in trouble. Absolutely. Really um, Rach, favorite Dan moment, favorite Helvig moment. I liked I liked when Helvig showed up like the knight in shining armor that he now is. <laughs> knight in shining and quills. He me like yeah. a big spiky angel. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed describing that as well. That was fun. <laughs> it, was, it was beautiful. And then he, just healing me, and then Jude like like a like a spiky god. <laughs> a spiky god. Um, yeah, dead set. Um, no, we can't. Sure. Sorry, he's a hedge warlock. Um, amusingly, actually, there's supposed to be a hedge wizard in this, um, but she got traded out for Burzan of the Swamp. Um, she's supposed to be a hedge wizard. Still um, super cool. Burzan was the best. super cool. We we like Burzan we love Burzan. Is so cute. Yeah. Um, I don't. I wonder what Burzan would make of Helvig now. Um, <laughs> oh, look at me, person, <laughs> person, please. Oh, remember that's... me as I was. <laughs> probably, make, probably make him into a suit of armor. Ooh. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, Mitch. <laughs> what do we reckon? Best, best Nevermore moment. Not Nevermore. Helvig uh, moment. Tr- Helvig moment. Helvig oh moment. yeah, uh, yeah. Have I we had def- a Helvig from you? Yeah, I, I I chimed in with the definitely part where the the standing up and it's like it's still on me, is it? <laughs> and you're feeling the weight on your back. It just, yeah, the, just the absolute <laughs> the mortified expression as you realize there's a dead body attached to your back. <laughs> you can't get it off. He oh, couldn't even that. stand. I like love he it. couldn't even stand um if, if people hadn't shown up um amazing yeah it was glorious it was great it was wonderful we all loved it trish let's talk about trish let's talk about trish baby uh what was your favorite trish moment rach uh i liked getting to uh shed a bit of light on lazarus and what what the bandit coalition thinks of that guy damn you that was mine That was fun for me. It was on point. It was on point, particularly as I have not discussed this with Rachel. Um, we, I've, I've, I've mentioned a couple of bits. I've, I've given some indication that of what I think, but mm. Rachel, Rachel took really it. took it and went and ran. That's why it was my favorite moment. Was because it was, I'm claiming it, um, <laughs> because. <laughs> Because you, you, you. That's well building from you at this point. This isn't me doing this. This is you doing it, um, mm. and it's super cool. You didn't. You did it in a really gentle way. Like you were as gentle with Nevermore as you could be. Um, it was the time for that information to come out. Um, it was a really good backstory drop. It wasn't. Didn't feel like telling the audience something. It was very much now is the time for that information to be revealed, um, and you just met Riffin as well. So you saw this little insight into Nevermore's backstory. You saw this insight. You finally, you had a person you could ask for confab and you got it. And, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but yeah, exactly. Um, absolutely. So yeah, that was my favorite Trish moment. No one else can steal it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Rachel, I absolutely agree. It was an amazing job. Um, Mitch, what do you reckon? Uh, honestly, it was it was something right towards the very beginning where I was trying to get everybody to go towards the blade and talon, and Trish was like, "Oh, you're going to be embarrassed with this," or like, "Yeah, well, Damn, we, what we, we should say. all we should all go towards the Golden Horn Inn." Yeah, let's just do that. And I'm just like, "Yeah, fuck no." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, how can I get them to not go to this place? And she ah, calls yeah, you on your bullshit, it. and then she supports yeah. you when you go, no, actually, let's yeah. go. And then she was like, no, no, I think the, the Blade and Talon, let's do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was lovely. Um, <laughs> um, we've got a few. Trish dying, then instantly coming back and stabbing her killer like, I'm back, bitch! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
Trish is the as morally as the morally strong, thoughtful leadership role that keeps everybody else from becoming shameful shadows of themselves in the most subtle way. It's a powerful character development and fuels the dynamic. Indispensable. Damn, Damn that, that is fucking deep. deep. Damn, Jesus Nemo Christ! Nemo. It's like you're a you. like you understand these things. Well done. Good on you, Nemo Memo. Um, Thank you so much. Favorite Trish <laughs> moment was the fact that she was the only one who noticed the city wide panic and only just yeah they are shit. <laughs> And noticing stuff in their sleep. They are really rubbish at it. it deep sleepers. I'd said, I'd said it was sleep. a DC 10, and none of them got above a nine. So I was like, fuck, I'll give it to Trish, because otherwise nothing will happen. And I've only prepared this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have to improvise an entire fucking episode. Um, <laughs> uh, when it, it was good, uh, the stuck body or... Oh, the part where Helvig didn't notice that he'd become a silver, a Super Saiyan hedgehog. Hedgehawk. Um, Helvig roleplay was amazing at the end. Perfect character. Um, Helvig studied the Vlad the Impaler's techniques. Um, yeah, the character okay. development in this series is is truly on point. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, more, more Trish moments. Let's talk about Dan. What do we reckon? Oh man, I have to cross out so much of my list and now everyone <laughs> brought it up. Um, yeah, I like the today we saw really the like the two sides of Trish. Like at the beginning, there was the like the kind of whimsical like eye glint, like haha, I get you now, nevermore. Yeah, with the, <laughs> I see what you're trying to do here, and I'm gonna tease you for it. And then, like, the end and, like, letting that go and, like, knowing when to be serious and when to bring up information. And, yeah, that was cool. Also, mashed potatoes. <laughs> um, yeah, oh. Oh, the mashed potatoes. I love that the mashed potatoes are. Rylan's awesome. got it. Trish's tail blanket yeah. absorbs. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, adorbs? Absorbs. Adorbs. 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 It is totes adorbs. Yeah. Um, we're missing one. We haven't had Please. one, but is it AJ? Yeah. AJ, yeah. Rylan stole mine. Um, yeah, that's fine. You can have it. Trish's Trish's tail blanket slash teddy bear to Jude. The the spooning <laughs> Trish's tail and having Trish spoon Jude, but also Jude like um, Trish noticing everything happening in the city, and rather than waking Jude up, the she picks. just scooped dude but then aggressively knocked dude <laughs> wake up wake up Shh, don't wake dude <laughs> we'll have a spa day later it was just yeah. like this like little baby dude did the boys yes we do veg we definitely do want to see the academy of zandar promo again but we'll finish this first um yeah uh so i think that's it um great no, it's no. your turn ah, it's your you turn. don't do that all right <laughs> your favorite moment from yourself please oh shit um my favorite moment was uh being riffing um and um bitch ryland you can shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, no. Oh, God. You. Happy birthday to you. you. Happy birthday, birthday, birthday dear Josh. Josh. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Uh, I am now. <laughs> I am old man now. <laughs> I am 34 tomorrow. I'm pretty sure none of us are in sync for that. Yeah, I've just passed a third of a century. Um, <clears throat> Your favorite moment, Josh. Stay yeah, silent yeah. in yeah. honor of Josh not wanting it last. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, I loved being Riffin, and I loved it for several reasons. One, because I got to start making up my own rules. Um, but also, um, Riffin is such an adorable character, and we have very radically changed him in a, the space of about 20 minutes. Um, mm. So he's he was originally, like, in the book, he is intended to be quite, he's, he's this adorable, uh, little, little strig knight. Um, and I gave him a Scottish voice, because why not? That's funny. It's so right? funny. Um, I was like, oh, he's but adorable. But then oh. he's this gruff. 
Uh, and he was like, yeah, no, we did kill a few guys in their sleep. Yeah, why not? Fuck it. After they surrendered, definitely. Yeah. But getting to, because I wanted to, with that, I did, and I did drop it in there. The very first time they accepted surrender, it bit them in the ass. It's like mm. rule number eight is never turn your back on a surrendered foe. Yeah. Um, because so when when like this is early on in Lazarus and Riffin's career, they accepted surrender, maybe a bandit, maybe not. Um, mm. And that person stabbed him in the back. So there is like there is definitely two sides to Lazarus and and Riffin. He's not a monster. He's just learned from negative experiences. Um, mm. Would they necessarily accept uh, surrender? Probably not. They probably became pretty hardened, callous bastards by the exactly. end. Exactly. By the end of it, you would become pretty callous. It's it's hard callous, to yeah, to keep that. And uh, what's yeah. quite interesting is how like you guys seem to like you're still early days, but yeah. Hmm. Um, so yeah, that was my favorite me moment. Thank you. Uh, I felt right. Jude yep. evoked the sense of ruthless pragmatism that's wrapped in razor wire ball of whimsical childish joy to counterbalance the seriousness of her worldview. I loved it. Nemo, think, Memo think, coming out with them so, feels. So close to the truth. So mm. close to the truth. <laughs> um, Jude, Jude laughs at things that make her uncomfortable because that's the only way that she's been able to deal with her trauma. Mm. No. My highlight of you, Josh, I have to say, was the way that you handled Jude uh the musical performance and how fancy reacted so um politically like kind of you know what i mean like just trying just trying to be love you know oh, thank you thank you you know you did a great job yes yes mm -hmm. yep get, get, get the, the fuck up <laughs> yeah get off the stage that was for me for sure thank you Mine piggybacks off that one. I okay. really like because I had I had mentioned that Jude wanted tea <laughs> to go to the Golden Horn, and then suddenly Fancy had all the teas and scones <laughs> and English things and muffins. Jude was in fucking heaven. Oh, uh, yeah, in that, in that place, and then so <laughs> to be able to play the ocarina. <laughs> thank you for letting me do that to you. Um, thank you, Nemamin. Um <laughs> so that the uh, the inside of the uh, the um, dagger and strumpet or whatever it is called, uh, <laughs> the, the the talon and dagger, the claw and dagger or whatever, it was. It the, needs the, to be dagger and strumpet now. No, because the it was the something and strumpet was the first um, tavern in in medical. Oh. Um, I think it's the stag and strumpet was that one. Um, stag and strumpet, yep. yep. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, is based off uh, Fancy's place is based off a burlesque joint in London. Oh. Um, Fancy. where you can go to see afternoon tea and have an afternoon teas. Um, ah. and, it's, and it's, it was, uh, yeah, Karen and I went a couple of times while we were living over there. And um, yeah, you would sit in, in, in high backed wing back armchairs. You would have an afternoon tea. I had Lapsang Chouchon, which is my favorite tea. Uh, and it smells like burnt wood. It's amazing. It's such a beautiful tea. Um, and they would like with the cake stands and three tiers of plates with a little hole up the middle. And we watched a, a, a concert pianist do a strip tease whilst playing uh, Mozart, I believe it was. Wow. Um, truly amazing. Wild. Um, yeah. Oh. Wild. Yeah. Uh, never stopped oh, playing. One handed? Yeah. Well, quickly. Um, I, it, was, it was artful. It was beautiful. That's awesome. Um, yeah. That's that's where that one comes from. I was that was. We have riffing. one from chat. Oh yeah. From people are Fire Wing Mamba. <laughs> the flavor description for Helvig's arrow was absolutely fantastic. Also, really epic technical handling of the ranged town defense scene. Thank you. Um, that's very kind. I thought Josh did really good with the just the different voices and the different characters today. You wound mm. up being a lot of different NPCs, <laughs> but they were all very distinct. You had like a million different accents and voices, and I loved it. It was great. Yeah. Um, my, for my for for other D, for people watching, um, my trick in that is in my notes. I write 
just next to the name of the person, if I'm making up a person pre-preparing, I write a one word sort of key to myself for that. Um, fancy, for example, I wrote Mary Poppins. <laughs> um, that's just character guide. Um, yeah, Riffin actually didn't have, I didn't know what I was gonna do with Riffin until I, I actually played him. Because <laughs> um, I was preparing somewhat in a rush today. <laughs> um, yeah, Dan? My thing for get this you over with. to <laughs> grab everyone else into a neat little bundle is um, I think today you were very quick on your feet and like it really made the world around us feel alive. We threw a lot of curveballs at you. Jude <laughs> is like going to play the ocarina also T and now I'm going to jump up and impale someone but technically don't mean to. And immediately the guy was like, oh, that's, that's scarring. I'm just going to surrender now. And it was just like snappy and quick. And yeah, it was like, it's there. The world is reacting to us. It's all it's all happening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, how did the epic, uh, epic dwarf, how did the bandit survive the javelin to the eye? Because he had enough hit points. Sorry. <laughs> I, it, they were they were steamrolling at that point. I wanted it to like there still be some challenge left. I did manage to knock two of them unconscious, which is better than I've ever done before. Mm. Um, I'll never manage it again, though, not with uh, Helvig invulnerable dew point. Um, metallic sonic Literal suplex tank. to a man, a man to death is my chat quote of the night. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna be a spiky bush and crawl around like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, amazing. So uh, we have Veg. serum seven six for some thing of me. Yeah, I think it is time to go over to Veg for a raid. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for uh, watching. Don't forget to follow. Don't forget to subscribe. We've got a heck number of new subscribers. It is still, I believe, September. So if you actually do want to continue that sub, it is cheaper currently. Um, but still mm -hmm. the same amount of money goes to the channels, which is really nice. It's a Twitch thing. Um, and I believe they've partnered with Subway, apparently, for some reason. Um, mm -hmm. Don't see really how that works. Um, <clears throat> yeah, sub yeah, I, I, obviously sub, sub 10. Yeah, I get it. I understand the, <laughs> the pun Ricky. they're making. I just don't really understand how Twitch and Subway interact in a sort of... In sure a meaningful like a, Twitch players sure and streamers sub like Subway. Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, pe people who watch Twitch also eat food. I get that, but uh, <laughs> you I enjoy just want food. To explain. Do you enjoy food? Have you tried Subway? It's food. Um, no, they also have with... cookies. Um, can I also, my favorite moment, Veg, um, was Veg's incredible Node 1 ad. Um, I'm <laughs> oh not my sure. Fuck. I'm not sure if we're doing Node 1 an amazing service there. Uh, <laughs> um, I think we are. Check them uh, out. <laughs> um, look, oh, they oh. do do an amazing job. We haven't had a dropout since we started using them. Uh, mm -hmm. Node one ad was was top shelf. Um, thank you to Brepi for our amazing art. Thank you to Node one Internet for our amazing quality of internet stream. Um, thank you to the Deck of Many for sponsoring this show. Um, they wrote the book. I constantly reference the book because I'm trying to advertise how good it fucking is. The mini is a deck of many. The, the, the people made them. I also have uh, NPCs. I've got four more NPCs you haven't met yet. I've got minis of all of them. Uh, actually, you have met one of them, um, but it hasn't become relevant yet. So I won't show you the picture. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, um, guys, it's been super fun. Veg, can you take us away for a raid, my friend? I can indeed, but there's something I have to do beforehand. Oh. I have to get well, each of you to give Lord. yourselves a shout out. Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's. I, I'm sorry, I forgot about it. <laughs> can, John, um, yeah. AJ, tell me about yourself. Go. Hi, I'm AJ. You can find me on Instagram where I keep you up to date with all the creative stuff I'm doing, including Monday nights, Humblewood. Wednesday night this week's Cerberus Ascending finale um super excited and there may or may not be a second promo video for academy being released that evening um and then starting next week thursday oh shit oh, it's happening is the academy of xander so oh. uh you will actually get a lot of 
images and spoilers and things um, <laughs> spread it out across the uh, Roll for Damage Insta, YouTube, and my Instagram as well over the next week and a half. So, <laughs> so that's serums. Spoiler, they all die. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Serum, Josh's wife is Karen in the video that we will be showing you again soon. Um, that's the one I married. That's the one who agreed to it. She's beautiful. Um, she is beautiful um, and very talented. And she yeah. is in There Be Dragons. And so am I. I am in a podcast called There Be Dragons. Um, I see my segue there. Was that good or what? Segue was clean. Thank Woo. you. Um, <clears throat> I, you can find me on There Be Dragons at tbdragonscast.com and anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, we are, or There Be Dragonscast.com. I do apologize. That's the one. Follow the link. Um, I play Scan Felspars, a fearsome. Uh, he's got a little bit of dragon blood sorcerer in him, but he's mainly a ranger and a half elf, and he's got a dragon on his shoulder. And Karen Schlink, the lovely Ryland Westfall, plays the lovely Ryland Westfall in um, There Be Dragons, and she is a dragon lady and a fighter and a dangerous badass woman. Uh, if you like the sound of my face and voice, you can find me on Monday nights on Humblewood, and you can also find me on Friday nights playing the Eberron campaign over on Goa with um, the Dead Aussie Gamer and Shro Grill, who is in chat today, and she's lovely, um, and the uh, uh, Dead Aussie Gamer and Dreaded GM, and of course, our amazing producer, Veg, is running that campaign. Rachel, tell us about yourself. Hello, uh, my <laughs> name is Rachel Fukar, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rachel Fukar, because that name was not taken, it never is. Ooh. I also have... <laughs> A podcast called A Beginner's Guide to the Occult. It's about a supernatural investigator who's really bad at her job, and it's super fun, so you should listen to it. Woo! Like it. Like it. It's Love so everything good. about it. Mitch, tell us about yourself. Hello, everybody. Nevermore here. During uh, our D&D sessions, I'm Nevermore, but during every other hour of the day, I'm Big Viking Mitch. I, you can find me over at Twitter, Big Viking Mitch, where I do a lot of shit posting, and I would say stay tuned on Twitter and on Discord because what happened over the weekend, where I got the opportunity to DM for Generosity and um, Pax Oz, and uh, on this channel here on Roll for Damage, we'll see what comes next. And I'm thinking Ooh. something more will come next. Ooh. We'll just see. But you'll find that out if you follow on the socials. So thank you. I desperately want to know more. So and do I, man. Finally, <laughs> finally, uh, but in no way leastly, we have the god of blood and death himself, Helvig Dewpoint, Dan. D Rab, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Dan. Most of what I do is in the for reals life meat space. I'm not really that big on social media, but that is conducive to professional lurking. I'm in DRAB in Twitch chat and in Discord. That's D W E R A B. Come hang out, follow all of these guys, and come watch us next week or through the VODs as I play a walking barb fortress now. Yeah. <laughs> Praise me to him. Praise him, the blood of God and meth. Meth? Yes. Uh, He's the god of blood and meth. Meth? That's why he's got 26 AC because he can't feel it. I am made of silver. Jesus. So thank you, everyone. It's actually a Breaking Bad Humblewood crossover. A god of meth. What? Is Nevermore the one with like. Yes. Yeah, he's the professor, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's the one who is walking around in his underwear right now. So I'm I think... Heisen Bird. Oh. <laughs> yes. Um, that was good. I'll give you that one. He's the one with the good pants. Okay. Uh, please, Veg, take us on a raid. I want to know who we're raiding. Tonight, we actually have the fine opportunity to raid... Someone that has been on our channel from the very start. Someone that has been here since our first game that I played in alongside. And it's his first return back into streaming after a much long break. Amazing. We're going to raid Agent Number One. A what? Yeah. yeah he's been on a bit of a break. A, a long break. ass break. Um, but of course, before we do that, we're going to run that promo. Yeah, we are. And yeah, I'm not going to talk to it again. <laughs> All right, get ready for it. Here it comes. Brace yourselves. Gird your loins. Hi. 
Hi, I'm Karen and I am playing V. V is an elven rogue of the Shadow Kai variety. Um, so she's a little bit evil, but in a sort of blase sort of a way. V could be described as an undead rebel. She's very pale. A little bit of a bluish tinge in there, but she's got a cool tap in one hand, some piercings. She's way more punk rock than I am. V has an interesting relationship with her parents, so the fact that they think her going here is a good idea immediately rings some sort of alarm bell for her. Um, but at the same time, she's open to new possibilities, new adventures, new things to steal. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nikolai and I will be playing Donny Carbone. Donny is a uh, rebellious punk with a heart of gold and a tongue of silver. Um, he is a con man in the streets of Elder York, but in the Academy of Xandar, he's just a student. Donny is a tabaxi who looks like an alley cat that got into several fights that he's lost. Um, with a little bit of like the the regalness of a tiger mixed in. Uh, he's beaten and battered, but keeps his head high. He's recently had a bit of a fling with a beautiful archfey, uh, who he thinks he is married to, but she has bestowed upon him many wondrous gifts, of which he is uh, very curious to take advantage of. Hi, I am Tristan, and I will be playing Basil Beryllium, who is a human barbarian uh, who is just ready to go out and experience the world. Big reveal! Ah, oh, he's made a slime! He's a slime ooze man! Haha, <laughs> gotcha. Basil Beryllium is an ooze that ate a boy and then turned into the boy and is just so chuffed about it. Basil looks like if James Potter had a sordid love affair with Shaggy Rogers from Scooby-Doo. Um, uh, thick rimmed glasses, uh, little tiny um, spectacle lenses that he can adjust um, like a jeweler. Basil is made of ooze and slime and not meat. So he's worked really hard on making himself look like meat. So he's got, he's got eyes. They were the, the easiest thing to do because they're basically jelly. Um, skin was a little bit more difficult, uh, but what he's really proud of is hair. So whenever he can, Basil looks like he, he's got just a little bit of stubble, but bad stubble, like baby's first stubble. Hi, uh, my name is Ed. Um, I play Ty, who is a large snake man bard that just wants to make friends and, and jam out. <laughs> jam out? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Ty is a seven foot long snake. He is uh, green and yellow, uh, big uh, electric blue eyes. He looks very threatening, uh, but upon closer inspection, you'll see that he's actually just a, a real happy-go-lucky snake uh, that doesn't actually have a, a bad bone within him. So Ty doesn't really understand school. Uh, it, where he's from, things are done very differently, but he also doesn't like uh, his family and his society and, and where he grew up, so he's just excited to, to try something new and, and, and really get into the school environment and, and, and make friends and, and learn. 